All right, everybody. What is going on? Hello, hello, hello. What is going on? You guys hear me okay? Yeah, you guys can hear me okay. All right. Look at how many of you are waiting here. We got 200 people just waiting before the stream has even started. You... Dumb, meat-headed motherfuckers. You giant dummies. All I have to do is put top 30 <laughs> power scaling into the stream? And that's what you guys want to show up for? Hmm? No one's interested in art, discussion, a volume cover tier list, color spread tier list. No, they just want to talk about the power scaling. That's what they want. That's what the people want. That, that's what the people want to see, right? Yeah, that's what the people want to see. It's a sad world. People want me to talk about the finer points of One Piece. They want to talk about why One Piece is the greatest story of all time, yada, yada, yada. But that is a lie. Deep down inside, they just want to hear that Zoro is stronger than Sanji. And they want to hear me disrespect Law. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I won't lie, I'm excited for this stream as well. I saved it for a rainy day, and what better time than when One Piece is out of commission for literally five weeks. Jordan Taylor, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for nine months. Blue Box mentions Steph Curry, so I guess you have to read it now. What's Blue Box? I don't even know who Steph Curry is. I don't have to read it. Keenan, thanks. Morch, Hunter Hunter stream, when? Uh, when Hunter Hunter drops a chapter, maybe I'll do a stream on it. Uh, is there any supers that I've missed? Let me take a quick look. Any supers that I miss before we start the stream. I'm excited for this one, too. I'm a dumb meathead, too, at heart. We all are. And, uh... This one is gonna be... I'm curious to see... Um... How many people I could sway to my opinions. Let me take a look real quick. There's gonna be some rules for this one. Some rules that you might disagree with, but I'll let you guys know some of them right now. You know who we are not going to be... First of all, it's a top 30 alive today. Top 30 alive today. Characters that are unknown to be alive or not, Kaido and Big Mom, they don't count. All right? They don't count. Um, Roger, not included. Rock's not included. Samurai Ryuma from 800 fucking years ago, not included. All right? Have to be alive today. That's rule number one. We're going to be putting down the rules. You might want me to do this in a in an Excel sheet. I won't. I'll be using Microsoft Paint as usual. No, that actually might be a fucking terrible idea. Because rearranging stuff in Microsoft Paint is very difficult. And I'll be bumping characters up and down. <sighs> Alright, it hurts my heart, but I think we're going to have to use Google Spreadsheets instead of Microsoft Paint. Even though Microsoft Paint is obviously the best tool to use for streaming. Princess Taco, thanks for the two. Judge and Kid are top five. Judge has got the better shot at being top five, in my opinion. Tala says, read the queen post. Good starting point. Um, I've <laughs> deleted, I'm not reading the queen post. Uh, where is it? Is it, a, is it about power scaling? Is it about power scaling? You're going to have to drop it in chat again. Everybody look out for Tala's, uh, Tala's queen post. If it's about power scaling, I might skim it. But we got a lot to get through in today's, um, in today's stream. So if it's not related to power scaling, we're going to have to skip it. Um, yeah, so no Pinzoro. Um, no Pinzoro, no Samurai Ryuma, no, no random shit from the Void Century, okay? That stuff's out the window. The other thing that's maybe more controversial, no Gorosei. We're not including the Gorosei. We're not including the Gorosei. We just can't. I, how do you rank the Gorosei? It's just, it's too difficult. Uninspired thanks for, for the two Zunisha top 30. That's a good point. I would have forgotten about that. We're not ranking fucking Zunisha, all right? <laughs> Let's say the rule is... You have to be smaller than an island to be on this tier list, okay? Bun for gum, thanks for the seven. Morge, before you begin, please note that Killer called Kaido the strongest pirate. Luffy beat him, therefore Luffy greater than the rat-haired Shanks. Um, <laughs> did Killer call Kaido the strongest pirate? Did he outright say that? Is that stated at any, at any point? Um, I don't know. But these are all things that are worthy of discussion. JK Kane, pin Morge greater than Emu. I'm considering whether or not to put Emu. I could just put Emu at one. Like, Emu, it's, it's not the same as the Gorosei. Because the Gorosei, it's like, if we decide to rank him, 
the ranking is so arbitrary. We have, do we put them all above admirals? Do we put them all just below admirals? Do we do we put them above Yonko? Like what do we, what do we do? We have no way to scale them. Whereas with Im, it's more straightforward. If we're including him, then it with Imu in my opinion, it's basically like either he's number one or he's not that strong. I don't think there's that much middle ground because either he is that final boss of the story ruled the world as god for 800 years either he really is that guy or i mean we know he's got an ability i I guess the way i'd put it is basically like either i would put him down as the final boss therefore number one or him just falls into that really nebulous category of like well maybe he's yonko level or a bit above an admiral but like maybe he's not luffy's final opponent like you kind of just have to make a hard call with him with the gora say you can't even really make a hard call right you you can it feels like there's five of them, so the range of how strong each of them could be could be anything. Um, we have no guesses as to who's going to fight them. With Im, we can at least guess that it's going to be Luffy or Dragon or someone very strong fighting them. The Gorsei, we just don't know. Um, the Gorsei, there's just too many unknowns, and I don't want to give up five spots in a top 30 tier list to some like complete arbitrary guesses. That's just not fun to me. So we're not new- including Gorsei. We're not including um, the Elephant. We're not including... Um, we can decide if we want to include him or not, but basically, again, as I said, either he takes up a spot as number one, or I just won't put him on the list. Lastly, this one's really weird, but we're not including the Seraphim, because it's just, I don't know what the fuck to do with those guys either, because if I'm judged, like, we kind of have to see how the, right now the Seraphim make no sense, basically, because Luffy and Zoro should be able to wrap these guys up like that, right? But until we get confirmation whether or not they can just take him out with Conqueror's Hockey or not, it's just like, okay, do we have seven characters that are (laughs) stupidly broken in the story at this point that nobody knows what the fuck to do with? Or, you know, do we have to, like, are they Yonko Commander level or below or maybe above or something? Like, do you get what I'm saying? With the Seraphim, we really don't understand because the fight that's happening with them right now, we're in the middle of it. And there's no real way to make sense of the things that are going on in this fight because there's no real way to make sense of how hard Luffy and Zoro are trying and what would happen if they do try. Um, I guess you could say similar stuff about like, well, what about Aokiji and Garp? But we have so much past knowledge about these characters and where they should rank as former hero of the Marines, you know, um, and as former admiral, candidate for lead admiral. You know what I mean? With the Seraphim, the only information we have is this really messy fight that's happening right now that... Um, doesn't seem to make any sense at the moment. Daniel Allen, thanks for the 10. I agree, Daniel was supposed to become evil, but John was meant to rule to show the two sides of the coin. If he wasn't meant to rule, then no point in making him a Targaryen. Um, it's possible that the point would be that, um, he's somebody that is actually ultimately supposed to have the throne, right, by birthright, etc., but he chooses not to have it, you know? There's a lot of ways that that would fit with the ideas of the theme quite a bit. Um, the allure of the throne, the allure of ruling, etc., etc. What's the t- right type of choice to make when that comes down to you? Um, Daenerys, no matter how you spin it, and I don't know why people tried to turn this away from who she was as a person, but she was obsessed with her entitled birthright to ruling. Like, she was power-hungry as much as anybody else. She framed it under, the, under the, the light of, well, it's to help people. But at the same time, a lot of her dialogue throughout the series, especially early on, was very deliberately written to in some ways, frame her as coming from the right intentions, but then in other ways, frame her as being impatient, entitled, and maybe having some selfish desires and, you know, power-hungry desires at the same time. So her character was very well written. I think they just rushed it towards the very end. And I think a lot of people chose not to look at the more nuanced gray sides of her character in the seasons leading up to it, which made the final character change even more jarring for people because you got two things happening. One, a lot of people pretending that side of her character didn't exist. And two, when it's time for the writers to actually bring that side of her character fully into the fold and just make that who she is they do it in such an abrupt fast way that it feels even more shocking to people who don't see it coming already so that's the deal with Daenerys with Jon I think ultimately he's not a character that when he says I don't want it blah 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 blah, over and over I think that that is important to the ideas of Game of Thrones which is that this obsession with characters wanting the throne is a problem in itself so I think ultimately Jon would not have been the rightful the Jon would not have chosen to rule probably no matter which way the story went what the correct ending was but you never know you never know um this is one of the things that george r R. martin says which is like there's two types of writers right there's the planners and then the seed growers or whatever (laughs) 
to me, it's just like, well, I think we can probably conclude that the planners know what the fuck is going on and are going to be better at writing a long-ass story at the end of the day than people who literally think of writing a long, st- like, a great epic as planting a seed and seeing where the fuck it goes, you know? Um, because then you don't have a clear idea what your final thematic message, what your final character arc, etc. What is it all leading to? Uh, I just dislike that quote quite a bit. I think any, t- I think that's something that can work in a shorter form story, but not something that's so long form as like Game of Thrones or One Piece, you know. Anyway, J.K. Keynes is Pin Morge greater than Emu. That's why we're not including Pin Morge. No pin anything. No pin Zoro, etc. No Holy Knights either. I think the choices I'm making are just to to avoid stupid conversations. Um. Like, a lot of the new shit we're learning from Egghead, Gorose being strong, Seraphim, um, Holy Knights, we're just gonna keep him out of the, out of the equation. Amar Yasser, thank you. Orangetown Dog, number one strongest One Piece character. <laughs> Behanoid, thank you. I wanted to say Emu Top 1. Also, I like that with the addition of the, the Knights and the Gorose basically being ministers in Emu's cabinet, Marijua now feels more like an actual nation with its own culture. Yeah, it's really interesting actually how the Celestial Dragons society is being fleshed out as well. Um, I think that's something we're going to get even more of towards the final saga because I think um, Oda does have probably more complex plans as to how to deal with the fallout of the Celestial Dragons at the end of the story. D Marquez, thanks for the two. Morg, don't put Emu, please. I'll do a poll. We can decide do we want to put Emu or not. I think it's just more fun not to include Emu because it's like, you know where it, either you think he's number one or it just becomes like a messy discussion kind of. Like, if I include him, I'm just going to throw him at one because I personally think that the story ends with Emu being the final boss. So if I include him, I'm just going to throw him at one. Um, that takes up one spot on the list. I could remove him and we get to stick to just more interesting discussions with characters that could fall in a variety of places on the list. Kino the Far, thanks to the five. Rox was a fraud who coasted off his powerful crew, just like Buggy with the Cross Guild. I don't think he was powerful at all. There was somebody who was telling me they thought that as well. It was either Parvision. I want to say it was Parvision or Hidden Island or something like that. Somebody had that sort of a theory. Um, I personally disagree with that. <laughs> um, I think that that would be kind of sad for Roger's story and invalidate his greatest like his his greatest accomplishment or his most legendary moment as a pirate just for a callback gag in my opinion um arvind jayakumar thank you very much for being a yonko for six months man gorosei and seraphim as one spot each people like dragon also have no evidence for uh, for them gorosei and seraphim are worth theorizing uh, i'd say dragon's a little different because we've had a long uh with how do I say this? With Dragon, we have a long sort of, we have a much longer history of him being framed in the story in a certain light, right? So with Dragon's framing, we can understand to a degree that he's, he, how do I say this? He would be a Yonko type figure if he was a pirate, right? Him and the revolutionaries feels like the equivalent of a Yonko and his pirate crew, except they're working with a totally different purpose. That's the only key difference, right? That's why the distinction was made all the way back in any lobby regarding, you know, uh, what the difference is between what Dragon is doing versus the four emperors. And they're all introduced in the same in the same chapter, essentially, right? So it feels very, very similar. Dragon's being put in that group. So there's that aspect. There's also the aspect that he's Luffy's father. So you're going down the line, Garp, Dragon, Luffy. There's a clear lineage thing, right? You know it's a monkey D in their prime. Um, you understand how strong his subordinates are, you understand his role in the world in general, and his role towards the towards the close of the story, which is being the forefront of the rebellion, aside from the Straw Hats who provide a sort of different aspect of the rebellion, right? With the Gorose, we still cannot confidently say their roles. We still don't know, like, are these Emu's five most important subordinates? Are these his five strong are these the five strongest celestial dragons aside from Emu? Is it supposed to be some of the Holy Knights, right? Are the Seraphim ultimately supposed to be the most important soldiers? We have we have really no way to gauge the Gorose, period. And I don't want to put them, um, just group them together as one spot, because to me that feels like a little bit lazy. Um, we have no idea. If the Gorose are all going to fight different characters, then they're all probably going to be varying strengths. They might be in the same tier, but, you know, maybe one Gorose is stronger than Aokiji, and one Gorose is weaker than Green Bull. You don't know. Um, same thing with the Seraphim. There's no reason that a Mihawk Seraphim and, like, a Moria Seraphim should be the same strength, so I'm not going to put them just in one spot. 
Justin Holland, thanks for the five. Luffy and Zoro is definitely in the top ten slash five. Uh, I'm not putting Zoro in the top ten, man. Buggy's in 20s. Okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't know about this. Fun fact, Usopp still believes in Luffy's dream despite arguing with him in Water 7. Yeah, yeah, he does. Captain Face, thanks for the five. Or he did. He did in Water 7, which I think was a very touching aspect. Of, like, it was because... That's the thing. It was because Usopp saw Luffy as climbing to such higher heights and Usopp felt a sense of inferiority not being able to keep up with the crew. And that's what he specifically said when he explained to them right before announcing the duel that, you know, I knew at some point I wouldn't be able to keep up with you guys. So it's because Usopp thinks so highly of Luffy and believes so strongly in what Luffy's capable of and has doubts about himself. That was the real cause for the duel, which I think was a really, really great idea. It wasn't the, it wasn't the usual... It wasn't like, oh, two alphas of the crew butting heads or something like that. Like, you don't, like, you know, I'd be better than you. Like, you know, it was the opposite. It was like, I can't keep up with you. You're going to leave me behind eventually. Before that happens, I'm going to separate on my own terms. But I'm going to go out with a bang, basically. Um, Luffy Usopp, great, 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 um, great, great, great scene in One Piece. Captain Face, thanks for five. No one deserves to get laughed at after they die. Much respect, Morge. Thoughts on Mihawk? Thanks. I'm not going to go into that at all this stream, though. Uh, thoughts on Mihawk once being a red-haired pirate, opposite of Zoro, left for his goal. I don't think Mihawk was once a red-haired pirate. That'd be really, really fucking interesting. Really, really interesting. That raise all sorts of questions. Um, I have no thoughts on that. Sean Easton, thanks for the 20. Thanks for the 20, man. Here is a 20 for having one of the only correct takes on the submarine on Twitter. Oh, man, I just said I don't want to talk about it. Idea for a stream, react, I appreciate that though. Idea for a stream, react to Mugiwara no Goofy's videos. Who, comedy plus you get, you can riff on them. Easy A plus stream content. Okay, you know what, maybe I do that Thursday or next Monday. I'm, I'll have to, send me one of their videos. I've never heard of this person before. I have to see if it's like moderately funny. Because if I just don't find it funny, I don't want to be a dick and like just be doing a stream of watching some videos and just saying they're not funny over and over. So if I find one funny, then maybe it'll be good to react to a bunch of them. Um, yeah, just comment something that you think is funny by them. Sean Easton, thanks for being a Yonko member for nine months. Also, it's been nine months. Hey, good content, man. Thank you. Uh, as my OG tech support guy, um, I really, really appreciate the, the long-term support. Uh, Mechlore, thanks for the five. Hi, Morge man. First time commenting. You're def the hottest One Piece YouTuber. Thank you, Mechlore. I really, really appreciate that. Um, let's take a look at... How many more do we... I want to start ranking. I want to start ranking. All right, let me speed through these. Um, Bunfagum, thanks for the seven. Scratchman Morge, are we excluding Vivre cards, volume notes, Road to Laugh Tale, and editor notes? I think you should only deal with the manga. Unless it's in an, in an SBS, I'm not going to include it. Um, Vivre cards, there's all sorts of random shit with Vivre. According to Vivre cards, Ace doesn't have armament hockey. I'm not going to do Vivre cards. Um, editor notes, these editors don't know shit. <laughs> maybe they know shit but they also I, I don't know I, I'll include SBS Oda statements and SBS I'll include um but I'm mainly oh that's the last big rule we are not using anything from the anime I don't care how well animated and how badass Law and Kid were made to look this episode I'm only looking at what they what they did on the manga pages okay alright I don't care if if Law showed the best armament hockey of all time this episode, it is irrelevant to this discussion. Rei Uchiha, thanks for the two. Are you going to rank Eneru? I don't think NL makes the top 30, um, so it doesn't matter to me. Visual Knight, thanks for the 20. Crack Theory, what if S. Croc has Eva's fruit and can change their gender? Eva was in... Impel down, after all, just like Senior Pink. The Crocomom debate will never end. Well, I think that's a far cry for... Thanks for the 20, first of all, again. Um, the, I don't think that makes that makes a Crocomom theory viable just because Crocodile might have been a woman. Um, but but uh, it, I think it would be ironic if Ivankov did use her fruit at one point to change Crocodile's gender, and nowadays Crocodile, the Seraphim version, has um, that same fruit. Kino the Far, thanks for the five. Sengoku did say that Rox was Roger's first and most fearsome rival. Buggy was Luffy's first rival and also the only person to hurt the Straw Hat. Dude, I don't... It's just... <laughs> To me, it has to actually be, like, I just personally would find it disappointing. Let's just say that. I personally would find it disappointing. I think there's a lot more that could come out of Rox's story if he was, in fact, a legendary pirate. Let's get the stream likes to 200. Tala just dropped um, 
a Reddit post saying why Queen is greater than Katakuri. We're going to pull this up when it's time to scale Queen. Oh my god, this is so much information. All right, we're going to put it when it's time to scale Queen. All right. I know Dragon Ball, thanks for being a, a member for nine months. Thanks for all the content over the last five years. Thank you, man. I really, really appreciate you saying that. Uh, it's been five years. No, it's been... I started this channel in 2017. I really only became consistent with uploading, I think, in 20... 2020, 2021, something like that, during pandemic times. I think 2020 was when I became consistent in uploading. But this channel's been around for six years. It's kind of crazy. Time flies. Jay, thanks for the five. LMFAO, Mihawk, Shanks, and Dragon. The real goat is going to be Bogart. Oh my god, I haven't heard that name in a while. Haven't heard that name in a while. I'm not an anime hater. I'm just like, we've got to keep something. Like, it's... <laughs> the anime is... It's, an, it's, it's not the... The anime depicts things factually consistently very differently than the manga and it varies based on arc to arc episode to episode how much budget there is for a given episode it's like how much time they need to drag out if they need a filler scene or not the anime is the fucking anime right it's off the walls you can't even like if i ask you right now how did kaido beat luffy in act one there's only one canon answer, which is Kaido speed blitz Luffy with a Thunder Bagua. That's the canon answer, right? It's cool that the anime did some other stuff to drag out the fight, and it ended with a long, slow clash with Luffy's King Kong gun versus Kaido's uh, club at, like, Thunder Bagua, but that is canonically not what happened. If you want to say how fast is Kaido, you look at Act 1 in the manga, and you say, well, he was fast enough to speed blitz Luffy in Gear 4th, um, towards the start of Wano, right? That's it. It's it's pretty cut and dry. There, there shouldn't be that much debate, like, how much should we use the anime versus the manga? It's like, no, they depict two clearly different things. We're going to roll with what, with what the author actually wrote, not what the adaptation wants to do to jazz things up and drag out drag out screen time, drag out the episode, make things a bit, a bit flashier, right? One is, one is canon, one's not. That's, it's really plain and simple. Um... All right, let us begin. Let us begin. Oh, shit, I was about to pull up Microsoft Paint. Oh, my God, I'm not allowed to do that. I gotta use Google Sheets. Google Sheets, Google Sheets. Google Sheets. It's so soulless. Microsoft Paint is just, I don't know. It's just got so much more character. Um, I don't know. Key thesis bro can you get to the list already holy i have to <laughs> look it only goes two ways either one i skip to the list and then everybody that uh is supporting through super chats doesn't get their questions answered which i'm not going to do or i answer the questions and then we don't get to the list we, we i gotta do one and then the other it's just the way shit works all right top 30 all right let's put down the rules here let me screen share for you guys so you understand what i'm saying all right uh all right, top 30. Strongest One Piece characters. Rules. I'm going to make this big, bold. Everyone will be able to see it. We'll put it in red so people understand it's a big deal. Here are the rules. And we'll underline it so no one is fucking with the rules. All right? I've forgotten what are the rules that I said. I said some pretty damn good rules. I wish I could remember him. Let's see. Something like... Uh, we'll, we'll make these rules bigger in a second. Um, something like... Characters... Characters must be alive. Should I make the rules red? Kazu Kazuyaki Sato, thank you for saying that definitely the strongest character is Panda Man. Agree to disagree, but I appreciate the contribution. 
Yes, lads. Thanks for the five. I love the anime. I can't believe it. I can finally say One Piece animation is good again. But man, some of these episodes, if I was high, I'd think it's Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like... I, I The auras and not auras, auras, I'm like, well, this is the style of Wano, right? It's the style of Wano, so... Um, this is the chosen style they're choosing to go with for this for this season, right? So that's cool. Um, but I don't want that to mean that, like, well, next arc, if, let's say, the production budget is not quite as high and suddenly characters aren't fighting with auras, then people are like, you know what? Aokiji's not as strong as, I don't know, uh, King because... Look at all the auras that King had during his fight and all of the crazy special effects and Aokiji's just out here doing Ice Shell and some dumb bullshit like that with the same, like, same Marine Ford level animation, you know? Um, the animation, like, whatever, the level of budget doesn't really, level of budget and effort by the anime team doesn't dictate how strong a character is because that's just gonna vary based on, you know, how much they can allocate to a given, to a given episode. That's it. You know, once we're not in Wano and maybe the budget gets toned down for the Egghead, or maybe the, to the maybe the budget stays the same. I don't know. I don't understand why the budget was, was able to be so high for the Wano arc, but I suppose the buildup, etc. But maybe Egghead or, or Elbaf or something, we don't get the same budget. That doesn't mean you scale characters off of like, well, was Toei able to pay like 10 animators to do this or 4 animators? I don't know how animation works, but you get what I'm saying. Were, were the animators able to spend like a month working on this or like two weeks working on this right that doesn't dictate how strong characters are uh kino the far thanks to the five you mentioned they have to be smaller than an island because of zunisha so pizarro is also out of the running fuck <laughs> okay they have to be i forgot about that shit okay they have to be you know what here's a simpler rule character no how do I... Shit. <laughs> you know what? No characters... Fuck. <laughs> How do I exclude only Zanisha? How do I exclude only Zanisha? Oh, you know what? No Zanisha. There we go. It's not that hard. Um, No Zanisha. No Gorose. No Seraphim. Um... I'm going to say must be confirmed alive to cut out Kaido and Big Mom. No Gorosei, no Seraphim, uh, no anime feats, slash, what is this? Slash aura. Um, no Vivre cards. <laughs> okay, wait, no. Okay, wait, I'll say only manga slash SBS slash direct Oda quotes allowed. What else did I have? I had something good. That might be it. Black Lightning, thanks for the five. Question, Kaku no longer carries swords around and is now awakened and with hockey. Why does Oda still call him a swordsman? Um, what do you mean, why does Oda still call him a swordsman? Does Oda call him a swordsman? <laughs> I don't know what Oda calls him. Um, I think be probably because uh, the Rankyaku fighting style is just... It's basically... You're using swords, but your body... I don't want to get... <laughs> is this baiting me into a swordsman debate? Um, it's, it's a little tricky with the... This is not... The, okay. If you're trying to ed, like push me towards the Mihawk Shanks discussion, Shanks, as far as I know, is a swordsman. Okay, <laughs> he fights with a sword, right? He's a swordsman. Okay. Wait, but that complicates things based on what I just said about Kaku. Look, the Shanks Mihawk debate. The fact that they had duels that's basically what sets them in the category of like whatever is considered a swordsman, right? They fight. They fight duels, and the Marines specifically talked about Shanks' sword skills compared to Mihawk's sword skills. Okay. That puts them, whatever. That aside, there is the general discussion in One Piece where Zoro often talks to characters and he's kind of... The philosophy of what it means to be a swordsman in the One Piece world, which is really where it matters, um, that's more nuanced because Zoro's talked about how Kabaji doesn't seem to be a real swordsman or, or Kabaji said something like that. During the King fight, Zoro out, outright said, like, okay, you're basically not a swordsman. Um... 
or King doesn't identify as a swordsman, basically. So, like, that, then the Mr. One fight. Mr. One pretty clearly was like, yeah, I'm not a swordsman. Don't think of me of that. So that's something to think about, um, which is that there is more nuance that is that characters are voicing as to what it means to be a swordsman in the One Piece world. So whether you like that or not, that's a factor. However, I don't think that affects Mihawk versus Shanks because they fought duels that sounded as though they're they're meant to be viewed as sword duels, in my opinion, just based on the fact that like Mihawk is showing up to challenge Shanks and things like that. And uh, the Marines are specifically talking about Mihawk's skill with the sword versus Shanks' skill with the sword. I think that that... I think that that flies. The The real question with Mihawk and Shanks most, mostly comes down to, in my opinion, um, is there stuff that Shanks has outside of using a sword that he does in fights instead, right? Because Mihawk should beat him if they're fighting with swords. Um, that's really where Shanks versus Mihawk, the, the question marks come in. I know Jaguar, well, thanks for the 10. The One Piece budget has always been extremely high. The, dif the difference in Wano is much more flexible and simplistic character designs, longer production timetables, and Toei being in their golden age of talent. Is that why? Wano has more flexible and simplistic character designs? I thought that things get kind of crazier with character designs in Wano, right? Compared to some East Blue stuff, you know? Or, I mean, maybe East Blue's so far back, but, you know, even if you compare it to, I don't know, Dressrosa, doesn't Wano have zanier character or at least as zany character designs as dressrosa i feel like it should be comparable um longer production timetables i don't understand why that is though why why can they do that before and toei being in their golden age of talent okay i didn't know that it's interesting black lightning thanks for the two it was a bait i got you yes you did keenan thank you elizabella with prep time solos the verse elizabella still probably has the single strongest punch in the series nobody else's punch is destroying mountains from across an island. That's just a fact. Nobody else is doing that with a punch. Nobody's doing that with a punch. Um, <laughs> like, basically what Garp did as soon as he landed on um, Hachinosu, Elizabello did that, but from all the way on the other side of the island, and it was a much bigger scale attack. So, Elizabello, you know, you <laughs> gotta give him props. You gotta give him props. All right, any other rules I'm forgetting before we get into it? I'm gonna go ahead and put Emu at number one. Why not include him? Why not include him? Why not include him? Are there any rules I'm forgetting before we get into it? How come a lot of people are saying Sanji can? <laughs> Sanji? Sanji can just... Okay, okay, it's just Elizabeth and Sanji. They're the only two that can do it. Um... Is there anything I'm forgetting? One second, real quick. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go from the top down because I think it's harder to do, um, do it like this. All right. And uh, here's the other thing. All right. Um, I kind of want to just list characters that I won't forget. That way, I won't forget them. Right. So like, who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Let's just get our word bank ready. You know what I mean? Um, our word bank. I think I can combine. Can I combine this whole thing into merge all? There we go. Yeah, this will be the word bank. All right, word bank. List of characters. All right, list. Shit, what did I just do? What did, what did I do? How did I do that? <laughs> no. List of... Okay, whatever. You guys understand this is a list of characters, right? Um, yeah, I don't want to forget anybody. I don't want to forget anybody, right? So, um, fine. I just won't include him. I'll, I won't include it. No including him. That way we get some more discussion, okay? I just wrote him. I forgot to put no. No emu. All right, uh, okay, just listing off characters and you tell me if I forget anybody, right? So I'm going to start with Yonko. So we got uh, Yonko, we got obviously Luffy. Let's go with Yonko Cruz, right? So Luffy's crew, right? You got Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Jinbei. I don't think anybody else in his crew is worth talking about for top 30. Um, then you got Shanks' crew, you got Shanks, Shanks, Ben Beckman, 
Lucky Roo Yasop. Should make this wrap. Uh, Yasop. Um, we do have the leftover big. I'm gonna say. Ki <laughs> ah shit! King and queen, right? King. Yeah, yeah. No, no. They're alive. Obviously, obviously alive. Um. So Kaido and Big Mom are gone, but we can still talk about their crews. We got King, Queen, Jack. I don't think anybody else cracks it. Why does it do this? King, Queen, Jack. Why does it, why does it keep going sideways? Whatever. King, Queen, Jack. Um, who else do we have? Big Mom Pirates, Katakuri, Smoothie, Cracker. I don't think anybody else cracks it. Um... Whitebeard Pirates, Marco, Jozu, Vista, Usual, Blackbeard Pirates, we got Blackbeard, Shiryu, here's where it gets tricky, I guess we throw in Aokiji, right, um, oh, let's get the stream likes to 300, let's get the stream likes to 300, 300, 300, um, Shiryu, Aokiji, do I put in Burgess, do I put in Pizarro, Burgess, these are the only ones I'll include for now, um, Cross Guild, obviously Mihawk, Crocodile. Um, I'll put in Doflamingo before I forget. Bunflagum, thanks for the seven. Off topic, you said One Piece has the great, greatest broken hero moment in Marine Forward. Which other manga contend with One Piece in this regard? Vinland Saga, Berserk, Hunter x Hunter. All right. So when I say certain things, it's in certain contexts. It's in certain contexts. Contexts. Contexts? Sorry, I can't pronounce that properly. In certain contexts, okay? I think you could easily make the argument for several other series, depending on what you value. I think One Piece has my personal favorite broke, broke the hero moment in terms of how Luffy was written as this, like, such a purely optimistic, strong-willed, like, seemingly unbreakable figure for so long. Like, that was Luffy's whole thing that every single arc was, or every single major arc or challenge was like a huge test of his willpower and resilience and he would just win over and over and over again. And he really was written, like Usopp sums it up really well in the post-Marine Ford um, segment where he's talking to Heracles, which is like, it just felt like Luffy could do anything. Like nothing could, nothing could truly, truly get to him. He can just get through anything, right? No matter wh how much he's punched down, blah, 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 like, it doesn't matter, Luffy always bounces back, because he's rubber, right, um, so because he's written as such a pure and simple character, right, you feel as though you're, you're not really reading, it's almost like you're not really reading, like, a real person, right, he's written so differently from other MCs, because you, you never really, like, he, he's written almost, he's written like he's a, he's like a fictional human being, basically, right, because no one's as, as, uh, pure, as, like, simply unaffected, unfazed, as relentlessly optimistic as Luffy, right? Who's just always there, always able to come back, doesn't matter what obstacles it's ahead, etc. He's never truly, truly deeply, like, emotionally broken or scarred or affected, right? Most other protagonists are written like that. And you get 500 chapters of him just in that mold over and over again and being the hero and getting the big win every single arc, right? Every single arc, it ends with Luffy's big win against all odds. That's why when it finally gets to a point where it like, it just piles like that, <laughs> that pile, like that mountain of adversity that keeps getting bigger for him that he keeps overcoming, right? When it gets too high and when finally it's time for something that's super duper duper extremely personal for him to actually be on the line and he gives the most, etc. the circumstances of everything that happened there and how he's been written so far, how his journey has been framed so far, that breaking moment is at least much more dramatic to me and much more iconic to me than what I've seen for any other hero. For me personally, because of the buildup and circumstances in the entire way that the, the story and his character was framed up to that point, because it was just the opposite of everything that Luffy had been about and everything that Luffy had been written about up to that point, you know? Like, Berserk is great, but Guts has his head and his emotions fucked with basically every other chapter, right? Um, Vinland Saga, Thorfinn, you're already dealing with, like, a broken character in the first place. Like, there's a lot of different circumstances, and it depends on what you prefer, 
I think the moment of breaking Luffy and the story arc that led up to it was the best that I've read, personally. However, flip side, I would say that the fallout of it um, and the manner in which Luffy kind of, like, I think the fallout of it was not as deeply written by any stretch of the imagination as plenty of other series. So it depends on what you value in terms of in terms of that. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the moment where Jinbei's like, remember what you still have. And Luffy counts up and he's like, I still have my friends. Great moment. But in general, I think that a lot of other manga are able to handle um, the, the deeper, more raw nuances of a character going through a mental breakdown much more uh, meticulously than, than One Piece does. I don't think that's necessarily One Piece's greatest strength at all. So I think the broader story and the broader framing of the character and his story uh, arc to get there, I thought that was phenomenal. I think the the actual nitty-gritty of, of what Luffy went through in the aftermath, no, I wouldn't say that that's the best I've ever read by any stretch of the imagination, but you guys get what I'm saying? Like, different series of different strengths. Nurgangi, thanks for the five. Morge, five months ago. Don't worry, guys. We have a team. We have a plan for weekly videos. It's going up like movie Morge. Morge now. Lol, YOLO. Nur, I can't talk to you right now. Don't don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Um, Doflamingo. Wait, do I miss any other things? I don't think so. Um, Malik says, thanks for the five. No shot. You actually think Big Mom and Kaido are dead? I think they're just not worth talking about at this point. Because if they're out of the story, like... If they're confirmed or not confirmed, they're just not worth talking about to me in terms of, like, characters uh, that are, that that are like, functionally alive in the story. I guess you could say the same for King and Queen, because they're probably not going to be in the story after this either. But with Kaido and Big Mom, it's kind of just like, yeah, but they're, it seems like they're definitely, like, they're made to feel, like, they're Oda's version of dead villains, if that makes sense. Manifest Joe, thanks for bringing Yonko to your member for eight months. Man, I thought the power ranking would be an intense stream, but not must not be since you haven't busted out the Microsoft Paint Morge. No, I really wanted to. I really wanted to, but I realized that it's hard to hard to do without um to do a ranking because with a ranking you want to be able to rearrange characters, and I can't really do that in Microsoft Paint. Alright. Um Gapehorn, thank you for <laughs> that's funny. Thanks for the 99. Um that's pretty funny. Uh, Doflamingo. Okay. Shichibuka, right? Recovering Doflamingo. Boa Hancock. Boa Hancock. Uh, Weevil. I guess we gotta throw Weevil in there. Boa Hancock, Weevil. That covers everything for Shichibuka. So we covered all the Yonko. We covered all the Shichibuka. Let's get into the Marines. Then we'll get into the Revolutionaries. And then we'll get into external characters. I'm going to throw Rayleigh in there before I fucking forget. Rayleigh. So, Marines, we've got Akainu, Kizaru, Fujitora, Green Bull, and Garp, and Sengoku, and Kong. I think these are the only ones that realistically make the cut. Uh, Akakao, thanks. I, hey, Morge, hope you're doing great. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, beyond that, okay, we got Kong. Okay. Yeah, let's get into Islands. I'm going to include Yamato. Don't worry. I'm remembering Yamato. Um, no, no. Let's do finish this out. Then we got Dragon, Sabo, I guess Ivankov, Morley, Karasu. I'm going to leave that. I think that's all for revolutionaries. Kuma. Kuma at this stage in time is not a strong fighter. Right? We can agree on that. Um, oh, yeah. Law. Law, Kid, Killer. Um, I was thinking, like, there's got to be some pirates that I'm not remembering. I guess throw fucking Yuruj in there while going through supernovas. Yuruj, the others are out of commission at this point, right? Yuruj, I mean, Bonnie, we're not going to rank. Beige is not going to make the cut. All right, let's look at islands. Let's look at islands. Um, among islands, we've got, oh, wait, wait, CP0 before I forget, while we're on the world government side. Luchi, Kaku... Luchikaku? Luchikaku? I already got Aokiji. I threw him under Blackbeard's gang. Uh, I got Crocodile. Don't worry about that. All right, let's go through islands. With islands, we've got, obviously, Wano. So that's Yamato, Inurashi, Nekomamushi. I think the others don't make the cut. Um, 
They're technically Zo. Well, they're Wano's citizens now. They let Carrot be in charge of Zo for no reason at all. Leo Rector, thanks for bringing a Yonko to your member for three months. Good evening, as always, Mr. Mort. Thank you. Just here to re reinstate that Akainu's for sure top tier three, since Sweet Admiral is not a joke title, plus Dragon Stock's flying. Yeah, I, uh, you'll be surprised where I put Dragon. I think a lot of people will be surprised where I put Dragon. Um, I think, uh, Akainu, there's so many characters that are, have a good case for top five. Akainu's definitely one of them. Um, Stussy, no, Stussy herself volunteered that she is below Luchi and Kaku, so at that point, I don't think you're really top 30. Um, we're doing current strength, current strength. Magellan, I would have forgotten about him. That's a great point. Just fucking complicating matters more. Impel down, we got covered. Yeah, I think we got the rest of the world world government side. I think we got covered, right? Because we're saying no Gorosei, no Seraphim. That's good, right? Islands. Kiros doesn't crack top 30, so it's no one from Dressrosa. Um, I think no one from the Strahd Grand Fleet. Zoe, we already got. Fishman Island, their scrubs. Dorian Brogy, it's too, too fucking... I don't even know what to say about those guys. Um, I'm just going to say Dorian Brogy are not top 30. <laughs> to be fair, like, they did get captured by some candle shit back in <laughs> Little Garden. But it's just... I don't even know what to say about them. Um, am I missing anybody? Jailer Beast, Pell, Momonosuke. Momo, Momo's not in there. Momo doesn't know how to fight. Uh, I already got Yamato in there. Sleeping Danger, thanks. I'm ready to defend Kid from Slander. <laughs> Prepare all you want. I'm not putting NL in there. I just don't think NL's in there. Um, I think we pretty much got, got everyone, right? Pretty much got everyone. Manifest Joe, thank you. Man, you got to remove Kid since no Kaido and Big Mom. No, no, come on. Kid's, he needs to be more confirmed than this kaido and big mom we gave them like we gave them a a window of uh what's the word a window of window of doubt i suppose you would say but uh it took too long the germa i don't think anyone in the germa cracks top 30 i don't think anyone in the germa cracks top 30 Because uh, the most we saw with Jerma is that, basically what we saw with Jerma is like during the escape attempt at the, um, when everybody was at the top of the roof, right? Um, Katakuri defeats Ichiji pretty easily. So if you're getting low diff by Katakuri, who himself is not going to be that high in the grand scheme of things, then I don't think you make top 30. I regard, yeah, I don't think I'm missing anybody at this point, right? I think I got pretty much everyone. I got Marco, Jozu, Vista. Um, yeah, I think I got everybody. All right, so we got our word bank. What the hell is this? Okay. All right, we got our word bank. Oh, I see. Okay. Zooming in this is weird. Zooming in and out. Um, can everyone see okay? Is the text big enough? Can you guys see okay? Can you guys see all right? I put Weevil in there. Why is this hidden? What is this? Do I need to make this bigger? That should do it. Okay. Reflexy, thank you. Can we sneak in Usopp and Nami, or are we, like, strict? Dude, we can't even sneak it. We're not even putting in Frankie. Look at the cast of characters you have before you. You think Usopp and Nami are cracking this list? I don't think so, man. Um, I put Jack in there. No, I didn't. Yeah, Jack's in there. Uh, I put the top three of pretty much every Yonko crew. Laffy, I don't know. All right. I will be back in uh, a second. You guys sit tight and we will get into the ranking. All right.
All right. It is time to begin. <clears throat> Wait, we decided not to do M. Why did we decide not to do M? Hmm. Why did we? I feel like. I feel like we should put M. I'm gonna put M. I'm gonna put M. We can get rid rid of uh, rule number seven. No rule number seven. That's too many rules. Stream with too many rules is no fun. All right. Bump this size up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we can we can include him. Cause with him we can just make. I I tried explaining this earlier, but him you can kind of make you can make more of a hard call. It's like, do you think he's the final enemy in One Piece? I think so. Yes. Therefore, I'm gonna put him at number one. All right. So we got him. Then we've got. My first pick is gonna be very very controversial. Alyoto5, thanks for the 5. I think I know what the Gorosai and Emu are. I've seen those silhouettes before. It was the other night when Morge came at me with a baseball bat. That's funny. That made me laugh. That's a good one, Alyoth. You you uh, you found a new way to surprise me. That's funny. Put in NL. Okay, I'll throw in NL, but he's not going to make... I'm not going to... Is there any character here that I would put NL... Actually, NL is low-key very strong. Just by virtue of the fruit... It's not just the fruit. The tricky thing is that he has observation hockey. That's the real problem with NL. It's kind of like... Yeah, characters who, are, who just have strong devil fruits. You know, the, the quote that Peckham's gave to Caribou and stuff. If you have a strong devil fruit, that's not... You know, Logia with strong fruits, they get wrecked or whatever. The problem is that NL has very good observation hockey. And if you've got the fruit that he has... And good observation hockey, you actually don't really need to be good at anything else. That's the tricky problem with NL. Because you don't need armament hockey. You only really need it if you're up against another Logia, but there's not that many Logia to go around. Um, you don't need armament hockey, because you've got all the offensive power you need. And you don't really need to be good at fighting too much, because with the observation hockey and the lightning fruit speed, you can kind of just teleport around. Um... So it's tricky. I, I, I think Eno makes sense. Oh no, Jagrawal, thanks for the two. Include Gorosei and Seraphim, but as one character? No, because I've thought about that. It's just like Mihawk Seraphim and Amoria Seraphim, they should be on totally different ends of the spectrum, right? Um, I just need to see the Seraphim fight wrap up with them against Luffy, Zoro, Luchi, and Kaku before I place them at, at anything. Uh, Gunner455, thanks for being a young Katir member for one month. What's sadder, Ace's death or Morge with no betting during War during Morge cast? All right, so <laughs> this is funny. Um, for those of you who don't know, everybody who is in the uh, young Kotir of support, either on YouTube or on Patreon, right, uh, they get uh, an exclusive Morge cast once a week with all my extended thoughts on everything and anything, uh, including this stream, etc. Stuff that I won't say in videos and streams or anything like that. All my extended thoughts. Um, I also like to complain a lot during the Morge cast. The last Morge cast that I recorded, uh, it was very late at night, and uh, I was waiting on my laundry sheets to be done in the dryer, so I was just lying down on the mattress with no bedding at all, and I was complaining during the Morge cast. It was a sad story. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's let's go. Um, NL, okay. Talas says Morge stop. NL is a snail by today. No, there's not characters that are faster than lightning. I mean, there's prob there are some, I'm sure, but most characters, it it's hard to keep up with NL. Um, he has observation hockey, and he's got... He can move around really fucking fast, right? That's just a fact. Um, what it comes down to is basically... Like, how do I say this? He should lose to a lot of characters, but I think the discussion is more nuanced than... Um, people w I think the discussion is I think there's a discussion to be had basically like let me be frank I think that NL versus Jinbei is a bad matchup for Jinbei you know I, I think NL versus Jinbei is a bad matchup for Jinbei because Jinbei is slow as fuck there's no reason he should ever catch NL and uh, NL's <laughs> lightning kind of fucks him up in my opinion Drive forces, you can just use armament. The problem is that NL has also got good observation hockey, and he's really fast. That's the problem. The only reason that Luffy... Um, 
uh, what do you call, was able to catch Eno the first time was because Luffy literally has, like, he turned his brain brain off and used the ricochet. Luffy could not catch him himself, obviously. Jinbei you know says uh, Jinbei would one-shot him. Yeah, if he could catch him. How is Jinbei catching Eno? Yeah, no, we all know that Jinbei would destroy Eno if he could punch him. How is Jinbei punching Eno? No, like, I just want a question. Like, I just want an answer. How is Jinbei catching Eno? Because, Eno, like, people forget the only reason that Luffy actually hit Eno at the end of the day was because he used a ricochet. It wasn't because of speed. You can't catch Eno with just speed if you don't have good observation hockey or whatever. Mark Ross says, we have no idea how much armament mitigates Eno's lightning. Armament is extremely, extremely effective, even today, by One Piece standards. Extremely effective. When Big Mom used, like, anytime Big Mom's used lightning on other characters, it has fucked them up. Uh, not, like, lightning against ulti fucked her up. Even lightning against Big Mom, when Big Mom's lightning was used against her in Whole Cake Island, that nearly stopped her in itself. You know, that was a considered very strong attack, even by today's standards. Um, Juno Alabachi says they can definitely catch Eno with observation and one-shot him. Jinbei's not that fast. He's not that fast. I, I don't know about definitely. I think there's a discussion to be had there. Like, in terms of speed, NL is factually a lot faster than Jinbei. NL has lightning speed. Like, you can go back and look at what NL was doing at that point in time, but he was zipping around at the speed of lightning. Okay, so he's faster than Jinbei. Observation hockey, NL's probably a better observation hockey user than Jinbei. When has Jinbei ever been built up as an observation hockey user? NL is a very talented observation hockey user, even by today's standards. Again, the only reason Luffy was able to hit him during their fight, the only reason was because Luffy used a ricochet, which is only available to someone with rubber abilities. So, you gotta keep that in mind. Uh, everyone post time skip is faster than light. What are you on? Holy shit, what are you on? No, they're not. <laughs> people post time skip are faster than light? That's some shit that people say on Twitter when they try and scale One Piece against, like, Dragon Ball Z for no reason. Mech Lore, thanks to five. Pre-time skip Zoro was dodging Kuma's light speed, his word, pad cannons, high tier scale, well past faster than light. They can keep up with NL. Okay, if you think that everybody in One Piece... If you think Jinbei is faster than Light, then it's just not a... Like, it's not a discussion to be had. Bun for Gum, thanks for the two. more. did your dates end in failure? Uh, no. I, <laughs> I didn't follow up with... I think if... I know the same girl that you're referring to with them. Uh, with... Sorry, with, like, back then. Uh, that is now dead. Since didn't follow up. Basically, I was out of town of another week. But uh, I'm seeing someone this Wednesday, so... I don't know. It's, I guess, like, I don't like the process of dating app dating just because, like, the process of matching, then you figure out, like, is this someone that is actually going to, I don't know, like, like, is it is it someone that's going to flake, basically? There's a process, process of that, but if the person shows up, then I think you count that <laughs> as a win if you're using Tinder or Hinge. But it looks like like it looks like I've got someone lined up for Wednesday, so we'll see how that goes. But in general, dating app stuff just it feels very flaky to me. Tala, thanks for the seven base pre time skip. Luffy repeatedly landed different attacks on NL. Ricochet wasn't the only time at all. You're forgetting the fight, even the final punch. The final punch, NL chose to take that. Right, the final punch, NL chose to take that. Before that, Luffy initially was able to hit NL because NL was surprised that. Okay, here's the question. Does NL know that Jinbei can hit him with armament hockey? If he doesn't know, then yes. NL would lose right away because he would try and just tank the hit, and he would lose, right? If NL knows that Jinbei can hit him, the initial hits Luffy landed was only because of NL's surprise. It was only because NL was surprised. Once NL, once the element of surprise was gone, the entire rest of the fight was Luffy trying to figure out how to hit NL, and he couldn't until he used the ricochet because NL has observation hockey, and he's too fast, all right? So there's no such thing as, oh, pre-time skip Luffy was fast enough to hit him. He was not, all right? It is not confirmed yet how fast you need to be or how good your observation hockey needs to be to hit Eno. But no, One Piece characters are not faster than light. <laughs> I, I don't know why that needs to be said. If that is your argument, then there's just... I, I, I literally don't know what to say to that. There's no argument there. But um, 
Anil chose to take Golden Rifle. So that's pretty different. So this is where the argument comes in. So this is a good argument. Sneaky says, Anil has greater travel speed, but combat and reaction speed is completely different. That's true. So the question comes down to, could Jinbei catch Anno before Anno moves away and uses Althor? Because, like, let me just show you guys. All right, let me just show you guys. Because um, people forget, Lightning in One Piece is super effective. It's super effective. Like, there's a reason everybody's like, well, Nami right now might have among the highest combat output in the story compared to, like, pretty much any character. Um, like, not any character, but any character on the Straw Hats. You know, obviously not, like, Luffy and Zoro and such. But, uh, like, if we're just looking at... Um, one second. You guys need visuals and reminders, is what I've realized. So, if you look back at, like, here, right? This is Enraged Big Mom, one of the hardest characters to damage in the entire story. This was considered a really strong attack at the time. And this, this same attack that Nami does right here, is the same shit that Enel casually spams, right? Enel casually spams this. Jinbei does not want to get hit by this. Let me tell you that right now. Jinbei does not want to get hit by this. Most characters do not want to get hit by this attack. Enel can do this attack easily. He has the strongest in terms of, like, sheer destructive ability. Um, he has the strongest Logia. Akainu probably is, like... Akainu has the best I, uh, offensive power from what Oda said. So I suppose, like, if you actually, like, are trying to tear through hard skin or something like that. But look, like, this is... Uh, go back and reread Skypea. This is exactly the same as what NL was doing all the time. This was his normal attack, basically. Right? This giant crater with lightning coming out of it, etc. That's Enel's normal attack. Jinbei literally thinks, I figured it wouldn't be enough, but he's he's literally, like, shook by the fact that Big Mom was able to tank that attack, right? I don't think Jinbei would be able to tank that attack based on his reactions. That's all I'm saying. Could Jinbei dodge that attack? I don't know, but that's where the discussion comes in. That's also why I personally don't want to include Enel, because he's such a hard character to rate. You know? I think if he's in character, then he what he would do would be he would just try and tank the first attack. Um, and he would lose off of that. If he knows about Armamentaki, like he knows he shouldn't be just tanking a hit from Jinbei, then it's a totally different question. Then it's like, would he teleport further away from Jinbei and launch lightning attacks from down above? Is Jinbei fast enough to dodge that? I don't know. But Jinbei cannot be getting hit by those attacks. I mean, I could go through the series and put out a lot of examples, but Lightning is still very, very effective against characters nowadays. Even, like, strong characters in One Piece nowadays. Lightning is still very effective, and Enel is the best Lightning user in all of One Piece. So that has to be remembered. Um, all right. Justin Holland, thanks for the five. Jinbei is aware of his natural weakness. Luffy has reference and with his experience to compensate, but it's your choice. Can we get back on topic? Yes, we can. I'm going to go ahead and take NL out of the list because I think that this is, it's just not a, it's its just too hard to rate him. It's just too hard to rate him. It's too hard to rate him. It's, it's like, he's the ultimate glass cannon. But it's tricky because it's not like Nami, who can just get hit by anything. Enel also has very good observation hockey, and he's extremely fucking fast in terms of movement speed. So if he used what he had effectively, he would do very well against a lot of characters. Not saying, like, Yonko commanders, like, top commanders and stuff like that, or admirals or anything like that, but he's a lot stronger than, than people think. Let's get the stream likes to 400. John 678... Um, Morge, are you seriously telling me up until that point Enel never encountered an armament hockey user? I mean, Enel didn't know that he could get hit. Like, he literally didn't know he could get hit. We know that for a fact. JWP, thanks for the five. How's it going? Thank you. Okay, the ranking has begun. Emu, I'm putting at number one. Putting Emu at number one. Um, from here, it's the controversial pick. From here, it's the controversial pick, all right? 
because here we're gonna put next I've had some time to think about this if you guys go back and check out my stream I did a while back where I ranked the top five one piece strongest characters I didn't have dragon high I didn't have dragon high where we're at in the story this was only and that was probably in the last six months I did that stream where we're in the story I think dragon is stronger than any of us gave him credit for and you guys know my anti dra you guys know what I think of dragon as a character I've ranted about dragon as a character plenty of times and how he freaks out over newspapers and how he's an idiot running the world's most important organization believing literally any propaganda that is placed in front of his eyes god forbid anyone take a photo that is mildly incriminating or <laughs> even puts anyone that he knows and loves at any sort of scene of a crime dragon will begin to believe that that person is just the most evil bastard in the world all right i've got plenty of problems with dragon but dragon and one piece there's three things that have made me feel like dragon might be number one okay i personally believe that the direction that the story is headed sets up the dawn of the world as the final most important battle of one piece right so rebellion against the world government yada 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 I think that is the most important battle, and I think that is the final battle. I think in that context, Dragon is going to be... The fact that we're still waiting and waiting and waiting on Dragon's role in the story, I think in that context, right, if the final, final war of One Piece is against the world government, I think Dragon is set to be sort of that... Um, like, I think what Shanks is to Blackbeard, I think Dragon is to Im. Essentially, I think that... Shanks is kind of set up as this really, like, the pirate that Luffy's looking up to, kind of the, the guiding big good figure, as I talked about in the past. That force in the world, in the pirate sphere, right? For the most part. Um, and ultimately, Blackbeard probably defeats Shanks prior to fighting Luffy, I think. I think on a slightly even more important scale, that is still being saved for the end of the story, the final segment of the story, I think Dragon is that to Im. In that, I think Dragon is ultimately going to be that final, that final big good force in the world, right? The final one that likely leads the rebellion, likely gets, you know, plays a huge role in the most important conflict of One Piece. And I think him losing to Im is ultimately going to be, like, probably Im's biggest win before Luffy defeats Im. Does that make sense? Or at least one of Im's most important, one of the most important moments. Maybe Dragon doesn't lose to Im, maybe that's just speculating way too much. But the way I'm looking at it is basically like what Shanks likely is, the role that Shanks kind of plays in terms of the current story, in terms of um, getting the actual One Piece, taking out Blackbeard, like moving past the pirate stuff. Dragon is that he's kind of the final person bearing the legacy of the Will of D all across all these years. The role that the Revolutionary Army and everything will play, Dragon will be at the helm of that. I think Dragon is ultimately, based on the direction we're going, I think he is going to be more important than Shanks, in my opinion. The second thing, the second thing, is we just got a reminder, we just got a reminder of how strong the Monkey D line is, right? So Monkey D Garp, who right now is way past his prime, supposedly a shadow of his former self, he is rocking Aokiji. I'm not saying he's going to win that fight, but he has looked damn impressive, right? He has looked damn impressive, right? That's Monkey D. Garp, way past his prime. Luffy, we assume, is going to be strongest character in the world, maybe strongest character in history by, every, by the time everything is said and done. I feel like Dragon, who is the only Monkey D who is already in his prime, I think that's a look at basically... I think it's going to feel similar to what Garp was in his actual prime what Luffy is about to be, right? I'm not saying Dragon is stronger than Prime Garp. I'm not saying that Dragon is stronger than Luffy at the end of the story. Obviously, he won't be. But um, just the fact that he's a Monkey D in the prime of his life, you know, I think that that would scale above Shanks, in my opinion. The last thing, and I think that this is the biggest thing, and this is something that I forgot, and a lot of us forgot, because um, Dragon just hasn't been around. Side note, I think the fact that Dragon hasn't been around is in his favor. Uh, I've talked about this before, but, like, it feels like the more that characters get saved, right? He is, at this point, the most hyped, most saved character in the entire story. We even got to see Im fight before Dragon. Here's the big thing, right? Here's the big, big, big thing. 
So there was a chapter, chapter 432. I want everyone to go back and look at chapter 432. This is what people forget about Dragon. So it's called Jack in the Box. This is maybe the most important world building chapter in all of One Piece. Okay. So this is where Garp breaks down everything. Before this, before this chapter, we the readers are babies. We know jack shit about the broader world. We know that there are three great powers. We know there's Shichibuka, but we know jack shit. Okay. So this is the chapter that it is explained that there are four pirates known as the Yonko. This is the birth of modern day One Piece. Our entire understanding of everything. It's born here. We're told that there are four pirates, the Yonko, who reign over the Grand Line, right? They rival Whitebeard. The Marine headquarters and the Shichibukai exist to counterbalance those four. This is the explanation of everything, right? Um, this is the same chapter that we learn about um, how important Shanks is and everything like that. Um, let me see. Luffy, is he really your grand... Oh, wait, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Um, the red hair, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, he has a connection with that red hair. Like, this is where it's announced that Luffy knows about Shanks and everything like that. This is where the Yonko explained. Nobody knows really about the Yonko. That's the thing. Um, like, Luffy's taking care of that straw hat on behalf of red hair. I didn't know he was such an influential man, right? This is where the Yonko are being hyped up, Shanks is being hyped up. And it's clearly a big deal, but it's not something everybody knows about, right? This is just the beginning of the chapter. Okay, this is normally the type of thing that you conclude chapters with, with an exclamation point. But this is just the beginning of the chapter. What it's all really a lead up to is this. Okay. By the way, Luffy, I heard you met your dad. Your dad, he introduced himself. Your father's name is Monkey D. Dragon, the revolutionary. I think presentation matters a lot in One Piece. The reaction to Dragon. Monkey D. Dragon, the revolutionary, right? Stun silence, Dragon, explosion. Dragon the Revolutionary, he has a son. What's up with this fan? The freaking out by everybody. Everyone, the Straw Hats, fucking Usopp. The goddamn frog is terrified of the name Dragon. Robin, obviously, etc. This is what the chapter concludes with. If you just read the entire chapter, it feels as though we are meant to care more about Dragon than the Yonko. It feels as though Dragon is supposed to be... That's the real big like bomb that Oda's dropping on us the existence of dragon uh again same chapter that we're learning about all the yonko the legendary pirates etc it feels as though the bigger deal is the guy down the line now you might just say well that's just that's just like you shouldn't scale based on reactions of characters obviously dragon's gonna be more infamous than shanks that dragon's the most wanted criminal but i i go bit by i think we all understand you know oda has a knack for portrayal and in terms of like part of the reason that we understand certain characters are a big deal in terms are in terms of how they're introduced to us how how things are like the level of hype that oda attaches to it how much oda himself seems to care that the reader understands that a character is a big deal uh dragon is the single most impactful name drop in the entirety of one piece by far all right and the final final thing i'll say is that like really if you're comparing between dragon and shanks right so you can kind of, like I feel like they they're ultimately going to play two parallel roles in terms of being that big good figure, and with Shanks, his role was in Chapter One, right? He saves Luffy in Chapter One. He inspires Luffy to go become a pirate, right? However, the flip side, equally important in my opinion, is Chapter One Hundred. Chapter One Hundred is all Dragon. This is the chapter that the legend actually begins. And here we meet a very different figure. And here we meet, you know, kind of <laughs> the figure that basically sees Luffy off to the start of his destiny. And he also is the next character to save Luffy, right? So Luffy gets saved twice over the course by two very influential figures over the course of East Blue. One is to start East Blue, and that's Shanks, who inspires him, right? Makes him, sets him on the trajectory that he's set on. But the second is Dragon, Right? The second is Dragon. Gohan, then, if that's your desire, what reason do you have for preventing man from setting sail? If you go back and read this chapter and the presence that Oda kind of associates with Dragon, it feels as though while Shanks was the one who set Luffy off to be a pirate, it feels as though Dragon is almost waiting for Luffy to be something more. And that's kind of why Shanks starts things off in chapter one, but Dragon's the figure that we see ending things off in chapter 100. So overall, in the grand scheme of things, I think that Sh Dragon is set to play even bigger of a role than Shanks. We just don't feel that yet because 
his role in the story is so pivotal and so integral to the final conflict that it's just not yet time for Dragon. Does that make sense? I think that's the best way I can kind of explain. It's not really based on, like, we, we know too little at this point. I could just be completely wrong on all this. But it's the, if I'm going back through the story, because I did think about this quite a bit. If I'm going back through the story and I'm just comparing how Oda has treated the two characters of Shanks and Dragon. Shanks gets a tremendous amount of hype. But Dragon, it feels like, is being saved for something even bigger. And the very rare occasions that Oda has kind of established the, the coming importance of Dragon. So like Chapter 100 or post Any Slobby. It feels as though Dragon is something even bigger than what the Yonkor is supposed to be in the story. So that's my take on Dragon. Does that make sense? <clears throat> All right. We're going to go with um, Dragon at number two. Walker, thanks for the... I don't even know what currency this is. Who, in your opinion, would be the last straw to leave the ship if the crew were disbanded? I believe it would be Sanji. The last straw to leave the ship. I mean, Sanji was down to leave <laughs> in Whole Cake Island. I mean, not down to leave, but you know what I mean. The last straw had to leave the ship. I think Chopper? Because Chopper's a kid, so he just has maybe the most, like... Like, I think Chopper would... The ship would probably mean the most to Chopper... Um, because he has no other family, really. Like, he has Kureha and everything like that, but, um, I think they can all go be independent adults. I think Chopper, for him, the crew is still his family that's, that's almost raising him in a way. Mark Ross, thanks for bringing Yonko to remember for nine months. All animal attacks are scaled off voltage. High voltage isn't necessarily high output. If the amperage is low, high amps kill, not high volts. The thing is, that attack def- I mean, that, that logic 100% makes sense if we were talking about the real world. This is Oda, who- <laughs> It's it's just Oda. He's just going to be naming attacks based off what sounds cool. A million votes, a billion votes, etc. Like, this isn't... It's not, you know, real-life logic. To me, that's kind of like... I personally am never one to, to scale things off of, like, when people sometimes go really hard into the physics of, like, well, if you calculate the size of the meteor that Fujitora is bringing down and we estimate the, um, you know, the cubic mass to be blah, 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 traveling at this velocity, etc., then therefore it's the most powerful attack in one... It's like, no, it's kind of, you know... Um, I see big lightning attack creates a big crater. That's kind of the same shit Big Mom does. These seem like the same attack to me, basically. Um, seems very, very visually similar, very, very reminiscent of NL's attacks and Big Mom's attacks. Tom, Tom, thanks for the five. Morge, I want to get into freelance writing. Any tips for cold emails? It's so hard to land the first few gigs. Dude, cold email is terrible. I, I don't... If you want to get into freelance writing, first of all, like, what genre do you want... Like, not genre, but what, what field do you want to do? Like... Um, I would suggest Upwork or something like that and building a resume slowly through there or Fiverr or something. Um, but if you want to do just straight up freelance writing, you're not going to get almost anything, anything through cold email because cold email is just, uh, it's the most brutal, brutal form of outreach by far. Uh, I strongly discourage it. Felix C, thanks for the two. Any Kong stocks up if he's still mysterious? No, because there's a difference between like, is Oda kind of playing up this guy? to seem significant or is this guy just someone we don't know about you know i think that's kong all right so i've got monkey d dragon at two i'm gonna put shanks at three i'm gonna put mihawk at four i'm gonna put akainu at five let me think on this for a second do i agree with all that bunfagum says morge dragon being number two is insane he has zero feats i mean im's only feat is killing king cobra <laughs> That's not how we scale things. Um, like, you can say a character is zero feats, but it's like, you can also understand... Th okay, time out. Scaling characters just off of feats is ridiculous, because that basically is saying that if a character is being saved for a later point in the story, then that means that they basically must be really weak, because they've got no feats. That's just not how it works. We all understand the way stories work and the way that narratives work, right? You can understand when an author... like. It's always funny to me when people are like, oh, scaling off a of portrayal makes no sense. It's like, no, portrayal tends to be very, very fucking consistent with what we see down the line, you know? Crocodile had no feats, but we could all understand that, and Mihawk's only feat was like, sorry, Crocodile had, <laughs> other way around, other way around, right? Characters like Crocodile had plenty of feats fucking up Luffy, but we can understand that someone like Shanks, who has very limited feats, is still going to be way fucking stronger than Crocodile even before Shanks did anything. Right? Just based on, this was before we knew Shanks was a Yonko, 
This is before we knew jack shit about Shanks. This is before we even knew that Shanks and like before Shanks and Whitebeard even met and had that face off and everything like that. We could understand that Shanks has been set as a character that down the line is Luffy's goal. Down the line is is going to matter significantly more in the story than this minor villain that Luffy's beating up right now. Scaling just off of feats makes no sense when you can also look at how an author is playing up the significance of a character in the story, their projected future role in the story, if you can project that to a reasonable degree, right? Not just saying like, oh, this Gorosei member is going to be, I don't know, Zora's final opponent, therefore we can scale him at this. That's too much, right? But we can understand that Dragon is already set up as Revolutionary Army leader, father of Luffy, likely going to be leading the Revolutionary Army heading into the final war, final conflict of One Piece, being saved for something big. Uh, and also just his inclusion in the story and the way the characters talk and react to him, right? All of that matters quite a bit. Um, so I got Dragon at two. Um, and I think that's something, I think that's a take that will age really well because Shanks and Mihawk and Akai, I think their roles in the story are going to come earlier. And I think that Dragon is being saved for the end game, end game. He's Luffy's father. He's a monkey D in his prime. I think he's going to be um, stronger than the existing characters we have so far. GK, thanks for the five. Totally agree with your point on Dragon's portrayal. The name drop at Marine Ford with Rogers and other inst instance. Yeah, that's true. Spoonman, thank you very much. Hey, Morge, I have no idea what this is. I don't know what ARS is, but I can tell it's a lot. Appreciate that. Hey, Morge, I had the idea that the Carlos and Roswell family are the descendants of House Nerona. I think it would be really Oda-like to make the joke that the main villain's grandchildren are the dumbest and most foul-looking and acting. <laughs> That would be funny. I wonder if Imu didn't have kids, though, just to keep himself, like, a secret secret. Like, I wonder if that family line is basically dead. But I do think that that would be funny. Um, We're going to talk about the things that I just put down. Bunfagum, thanks for the two. Drum, Mihawk greater than Shanks until he reveals his style. Um, This is something that I'm just going to project, basically, until... You know what? I'm fine with putting Shanks and Mihawk in the same, same space... No, but that's kind of cheating, right? That's basically cheating. Um, I'll do a poll. I'm kind of curious. Do people think Shanks is stronger or Mihawk is stronger? I think Akainu is the tricky one to gauge. Here's the thing. I personally think... I think... Okay. I think that based off of what we know, right you can't actually rate Akainu that high. Because based off of what we know, Akainu is basically the same as Aokiji. It's essentially equal. Akainu and Aokiji should be essentially one-to-one, -one, right? Akainu winning after 10 days doesn't mean Akainu is notably stronger, right? Um, so in that case, it's kind of shitty for Akainu because, like, if Akainu and Aokiji are basically equal... I don't think Aokiji's that high in the grand scheme of things, right? Which means I can't put Akainu that high. I don't think Akainu, Aokiji's weak, but, like, look at what Garp's doing out to Aokiji right now. Like, I think Aokiji would lose to Kaido. I think Aokiji would lose to Luffy. I think um, Aokiji would lose to a lot of characters. So, Akainu's difficult to rate. However, based on Akainu's role as Fleet Admiral, probable eventual opponent for Luffy, meaning that he should be um, fairly strong, we had 60-40 for Shanks versus Mihawk. Um, yeah, that's about expect. Shanks Mihawk is always going to be very controversial. Um, uh, yeah, Aokiji Akainu is difficult. So my assumption is basically that, like, um, that um, my assumption is that, um, how do I say this? that Akainu became stronger or got advanced Conqueror's Haki or something, some sort of a boost from his fight with Aokiji. I know it's a totally baseless assumption, right? But it just doesn't seem to make sense for Akainu to fight, for Luffy to fight Akainu down the line if uh, Akainu hasn't really progressed much from Admiral level. You know what I mean? Because the way it looks like is that Yonko are stronger than Admirals, clearly, right? I mean, even fucking old-ass Garp is taking Aokiji to town right now. You know, Aokiji might win that fight overall, but it shouldn't even like, it shouldn't really be close in my opinion, if Aokiji is currently Kaido's level or something. So Akainu is really fucking hard to rank. So I'm rating Akainu on the simple assumption that he has improved, uh, that he's unlocked advanced conquerors hockey or something like that. Um, 
but that is a completely based like that's not even something that's like implied in the story at any point that's why kind is really hard to rank i should take characters off of this list as we go right so we got mihawk on um we got drag where's dragon at where the fuck's dragon dragon's gone we got shanks gone yeah Caleb Brown, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for nine months. Hey, Morch, curious what you think Weevil's main character purpose will be in the story. Will it be tied to clones or maybe a sacrifice for the good? Uh, I really, I fucking don't know. Weevil's too hard. I, I know that's a terrible answer, but like Weevil's so fucking hard to gauge. I think it might be like a good character line or something like that. Um, I think that there's some interesting potential for Weevil and Yamato. I thought that that was an interesting character interaction that could happen at some point because they both have identity crises in the, in the opposite directions. Um... I think that Weevil being related to the Egghead Island plot could be some interesting character stuff, but beyond character stuff, I don't know his plot significance. Um, John678, thanks for the two. No way you just put Shanks above World's Strongest Swordsman Mihawk. I knew that this was going to be the tricky one. Oh, man. Oh, man. Michael Godwin, thanks for the two. Maybe 10-day fight was a lie slash setup. I don't think that was a... Like, maybe, but I like what would I even base that off of? Um... Patricia Zambrano, thanks for bringing Yonko to your member for three months. Sup, Morge? Hope you're doing all right. Counting the days for One Piece to come back. Do you think we're going to go back to Egghead finally next chapter? That's a great question. Um, That's a great question. I would not... I'll say I would not be surprised if we went back to Egghead next chapter. Because it feels like we ended at a good note. Where it's like, okay, set up a bunch of stuff for the world government side. Now we could pay, maybe pivot back to what's happening in the modern day. But I would love for it to continue outside. Would love for it to continue outside. Yeah, Akainu, in theory, I'm not saying he got stronger through training. I'm saying, like, did he have a hockey bloom over the course of the Aokiji fight? Could that be it? Because I think that's a reasonable guess. Jay, thanks for the five. In my opinion, the three OG admirals are all going to be as strong as emperors, but only with their awakenings. Oda will give them awakenings, right? Dot, dot, dot. I mean, didn't he didn't give the emperors awakenings. So, I don't know. Um, I'm going to guess that, like, in my opinion... Like, I think Kizaru, Fujitora, Green Bull, I think they're all close, at the same tier, in my opinion. Um, hmm. Um. Hmm. Okay, we're going to keep Luffy out of the picture for the moment, all right? We're going to set Luffy outside for the moment, all right? Um, we'll, we'll find a spot for Luffy in a second. Now, this might be controversial. I have a Kainu, then Aokiji, then Blackbeard. Right? Might be controversial. However, I personally got... I don't think Blackbeard has done anything yet that puts him above a Kainu or Aokiji. Um, he's a Yonko, but as we know, Yonko, that's just... That means you're one of the... That means you hold a territory and you're strong enough that, like, the Marines can't easily get rid of you. The only thing Blackbeard did to get Yonko's status was defeat Marco. That's the only thing he did. Right? It was confirmed that he became considered Yonko status once he defeated Marco, Blackbeard Pirates defeated um, the Whitebeard Pirates. All right? Now, if you want to know why I think Aokiji is greater than Blackbeard, I just look back at the scene in the bar. Um, it was chapter, what, 1000... What chapter was it? Someone help me. What fucking chapter did, did this happen? 1080? One thousand eighty-one. I think Blackbeard will be stronger than Aokiji and all of these characters soon, um, but I don't think he's there yet. Yeah, if I look back at the scene at the bar, I got the sense Blackbeard did not want to fuck with Aokiji. Um, that's just me looking back at the scene at the bar. Um, I'll keep like to me if I just read this whole scene to me the portrayal that I get the sense of is basically like Aokiji couldn't get give less of a shit that Blackbeard is here um, Blackbeard is the one that's a bit more freaked out by the potential of fighting with Aokiji that's the sense that I get 
And here's the thing. Blackbeard is generally very, very... He falls into two camps. If he thinks he's stronger than you, then he's very overconfident. You can see that with Magellan, with Law, even with on his deathbed, Whitebeard. If he thinks he's stronger than you, then he's very overconfident. Okay? If Blackbeard thinks that uh, his attitude is very, very different, and that's consistent throughout the story. If he thinks he's stronger than you, like with Ace, with Luffy, etc., he's very, very overconfident, very cocky. If he thinks that he's weaker than you, then he immediately, he does not look for a fight. It's very black and white with Blackbeard. If he thinks that he's weaker than you, then he does not look for a fight. You can see that with Akainu showing up at, um, um, at Post Marine Ford. The moment Akainu showed up, Blackbeard ran away. So we know that Blackbeard did not believe that he's strong enough to fight Akainu. Granted, this is two years later, but I'm just saying consistency of character. Akainu, he was scared to fight. Shanks pulled up and Marine Ford. Blackbeard did not want to fight him. Um, Kainu, uh, what do you call? Kainu, Shanks, Rayleigh showed up at uh, Amazon Lily. Blackbeard didn't know how much Rayleigh had declined from his prime, but the moment he saw Rayleigh, he was like, I don't want to fuck with that. So it's pretty black and white with, with Blackbeard. He thinks he's stronger than you, Hancock, etc. cetera, blah, 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 blah. Um, he's just going to be, he's not going to hesitate. Law, whoever, he's not going to hesitate. If he thinks he's, if he thinks you're a challenge or weaker, then he goes into a very different, more cowardly mode. That's pretty much the way he is. Uh, portrayal of this scene to me is basically uh, Aokiji is probably stronger than Blackbeard at this point in time. Uh, I think the thing to back that up is the fact that Blackbeard struggled with Law 1v1. Um, if you think, like, Aokiji would struggle... Like, do you think Akainu or Aokiji would struggle as much with Law 1v1? I personally don't think so. I think the fact that Blackbeard was heavily injured from that fight um, docks him several points. I'm putting him below Akainu and Aokiji. Billy Bob says, Blackbeard is two fruits. What the fuck are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Because fruits alone aren't everything. We know that the Admirals are good at hockey. We know that they have advanced armament hockey. Um, they're much more experienced fighters. Blackbeard, even at the time, like, the mo when Blackbeard got his two fruits, he still ran away from Akainu, post-Marine Ford. I, I think a lot of people misinterpret ca Blackbeard's character, which is like, Oh, well, he's just very calculated, like, he's very calculated with um, uh, his actions and everything. He is, but generally when he thinks he's stronger than some, when he thinks he's stronger with somebody, then he's not worried. He, do he just goes in. It's when he thinks he's weaker that he always runs away or, like, backs down. It's pretty consistent. Bunfagum, thanks for the five. Killer says Kaido is the strongest pirate verbatim. Luffy greater than Kaido greater than Shanks equals to Mihawk greater than Blackbeard greater than Al Admirals. I mean, that was Kaido's reputation, but we know that reputation is not the same as actuality. Matt, thanks for the five. Do you think the rest of Garp Time's Kuzan fight will be off-screened? Um, I think most of it. We might see the, the finale of it, or we might see the fallout. Takwa Nayuda, thank you. Blackbeard hard, hard counters Kuzan. Blackbeard is always vibrating. Um, you could say that, but at the same time, like, um, we also saw that Aokiji had a good shot at taking down Whitebeard at Marine Ford. Like, he had a decent shot at doing that. And I still think, I would still take Whitebeard at Marine Ford. Um, like, Jozu interrupted, so we don't know how the finale of that would have played out. But uh, Blackbeard, what, sorry, Aokiji had a good shot at taking him down. At least that's what it looked like before the fight got interrupted. Um, and I still 100% take Whitebeard at Marine Ford over Blackbeard right now. Um, actually, you know what? Like, put it this way. Like, let me just be pretty straightforward. Uh, Blackbeard had a decent difficulty fight with Law. Aokiji fought Akainu for 10 days straight. I don't think it's that complicated. You know what I mean? Like, Aokiji fought Akainu for 10 days straight. Do you think Blackbeard could fight Akainu for 10 days straight after the first interaction with Law already had him taking a sword through the chest? I think that's pretty straightforward. Blackbeard we know is going to be really strong, but he's not at his prime yet. Right? Um... I haven't put Luffy in. I haven't put Luffy in. I put Luffy somewhere around here. I haven't decided yet. Ramen Stains, thanks for the two. Pin Zor above Mihawk. Anujagarwal, thanks for the two. You think Blackbeard would have beaten Kaido in Wano too? No. Definitely not. <laughs> Blackbeard beating Kaido in Wano? No. Um... Let's see. 
Where do I put Luffy? Where do I put Luffy? I put Luffy... I think here. I think I put Luffy here. I think Luffy... I think based on what we've seen, Luffy should be above Akainu. I think based on what we've seen, Luffy should be above Akainu. But, I think just based on direction of the story, Akainu above Luffy right now makes sense. I don't know. Um, Alright, so let's say we got Akainu out of the picture. We can reevaluate down the line. I'll listen to more arguments. This is just to make some progress. Um, we take out Kiji out. Yeah. Okay, and we'll take Luffy out. All right. <clears throat> I just think Luffy versus like. To me, at this point, until Akain, unless Akainu shows advanced conquerors hockey, I'm not putting him above Luffy. Uh, I just can't, because Luffy's got too much going for him at this point. Okay, we're gonna roll with this for now. Now let's get to some easier things, all right? Kizaru, Fujitora, Green Bull. Let's get some admirals out of the way before we get to the controversial shit. Wait a second. I forgot a few characters. Garp. I put Garp above Green Bull. <laughs> I put Garp above Green Bull. I don't think Garp is stronger than Fujitora right now. I don't think Garp is stronger than Fujitora right now. Matt, thanks for the two. Yonko Buggy not being number one is crazy. Uh, it would be unfair. I think it'd be unfair. All right, I got Garp above Green Bull. I think Garp is going to lose this fight to Aokiji. If Garp wins this fight against Aokiji, we can shoot him higher up the list. Um, hmm. Hmm. So Rayleigh has volunteered that he is weaker than Blackbeard right now. I also think Rayleigh would have lost to Kizaru back at... Um, uh, Sabodi. I'm gonna put Rayleigh right around here. What, do people prefer Garp above Fujitora? Where do people think Garp should be? I don't think Garp... I just don't think that Garp, I think Garp could like knock around the Admirals pretty well, but I just don't think he would have this, like, let's see how the fight with Aokiji goes, but I just don't think that over time he's going to survive a long fight, basically. And I think that that matters. Ray Chia, thanks for the five. I'm hoping Luffy walks up to Akainu and one-shots him in base form. That <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, man. That's an interesting thought. Michael Goodwin, thanks for the five. I think that since the end of Blackbeard's fights are off screen, he's hard to gauge. Also with, that's a good point. Also with Shanks' constant awareness slash warnings, it's shady. I do get the stance. This is all very difficult shit. This is the, f like, let's be honest. Most of these characters can go up or down several spots. Like, I think within a range of five. Like, I think you could have Dragon outside the top five. That's totally possible. I think you could have Akainu higher. I think maybe Akainu's weaker than Blackbeard. I think both those things are possible. I think Kizaru could be, uh, it's, it's possible, uh, Kizaru or another Admiral is stronger than Blackbeard, or it's possible Blackbeard is solidly stronger than them right now. Um, that's the fun of the list. We don't know yet. A lot of these, a lot of these characters are pretty flexible. Garp greater than Kizaru. <sighs> Again, I think like, here's how I'd put it with Garp. I think if you had him start a fight with any of the Admirals, I think he spends the first 10 minutes kicking their ass. I think that just because of the way that old ass characters in One Piece are written, so consistently we see with Whitebeard, with Rayleigh, the problem is stamina. That's kind of what's been established. They just get tired quicker. Um, so unless Garp is an exception to that rule, 
uh, I don't know if I put him above these other admirals. You know what? But I, I am... I could see Garp as high as number seven. You know? Like, it's hard to say. I could see Garp pretty high. Um, Anthony's crew, thanks for the two. Horrendous Greenbull beat Fujitora. Stop it. Greenbull didn't beat Fujitora. Fujitora was not stated to be defeated. Uh, Joyboy56, thanks for the two. Ben Beckman should be top 12. Um... Ben, Be who are you putting Ben Beckman above? I'm not putting him above any admirals till we get evidence of that. So next, thanks for the five. Heart, I appreciate that. Keenan says, didn't know there were green bull stands. You haven't seen Anthony's crew. He's the only man in the One Piece community coming through. Um, <laughs> defending the admirals consistently. But that's good, because you need that. All right, are we removing these guys? We got Garp out of there. Um, now it gets fucking difficult, doesn't it? Now it gets fucking difficult. We got really out of there. Shit. This is the really fucking difficult part. This is the really fucking difficult part. Okay. So. We got really out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in Sengoku. Why am I putting really above Sengoku? Is it because I like really more? I personally think that in their primes really was stronger, but it's not really based off of anything, to be honest, like if I'm being perfectly fair. If really is to Roger what Sengoku is to... Go but the thing is, Garp and Sengoku are more so... There's more parity there, right? Sengoku, like, really is weaker than Roger, we know that. Whereas Sengoku is fairly... He's probably closer to... Ro Real Sengoku is probably closer to Garp, like it's probably like almost neck and neck than really was to Roger. And Sengoku is more in practice, right? Really is probably Sengoku is more in practice. Yeah, Sengoku should be above really. Sengoku should be above really. Like, regardless of what you think about them in their primes, um, Sengoku today really basically doesn't fight ever, right? The last bit of action that he had was, um, a brief fight with Kizaru. He did train Luffy on that island for a bit, but that like we know what he was doing for two years. He was just training Luffy on that island, right? Um, Sengoku, by the way, has also been training people. That was what he was supposed to be doing for the last two years, right? But Sengoku in general, like he was an active military member for years, whereas really has gotten probably rustier over time. So I'm going to put Sengoku above really. Regardless of what you think about them in the primes, I think that this is accurate. Nick Smith, thanks for the five. Have we seen any character other than Burgess lift a literal mountain? Um... No. Um, no. I, I think, I mean, I think Burgess is strong, but I, I don't think he craps top, cracks top 30, personally. Jay, thanks for the five. You're right that Akainu feels stronger than Luffy. Oda doesn't make major opponents weaker than the last. I, I hope Admirals get their love soon. That's the thing. I feel like Akainu should be higher, but it just doesn't make sense to me that he would be... Unless he got Conqueror's Haki. Like, unless he got a power-up over the course of his fight with Aokiji... I don't see how he would be stronger than Luffy right now. I just don't. I think that... Uh, I guess the way I'll put it is I think that Akainu... I think Akainu will be... This is what I think. But I don't have any good argument for it. Because it's not even... Like, with Dragon, I can make the argument that, like, you know, Dragon's past portrayal in general, um, how the direction of the story is clearly headed towards Dragon being most likely... Um, save for the end game, end game, even further back than Shanks, etc. Probably the most important opponent to Emu. Probably the most important obstacle or opponent to Emu before Luffy comes in. Um, whereas with Akainu, we can't even say for certain yet if Akainu is like, like how important is it to be Fleet Admiral? It feels like it should be important, but the Marines are slowly diminishing in terms of importance the further that we head in the story. And Akainu is. Um, like, we already have a lot of feats to go off of with Akainu. None of them put him at, you know, at, like, that level where, you know, he, he doesn't have, like, advanced Conqueror's Haki like these other characters. He's not going to be splitting the sky if he clashes with one of the top tiers and stuff like that. Like, we already have a lot to go off of. So with Akainu, his future is unconfirmed. I know what I believe his future to be, but there's really not a lot of evidence compared to, like, Dragon to suggest that that's what his future will be. And then on the flip side, we also have a lot of feats from Akainu that put him basically... Like, the feats from Akainu basically put him at, like, equal with Aokiji, which isn't 
that which isn't that great you know what i mean um so i i think i have to put a kind of here it doesn't feel right though i feel like a kind of should be still above luffy I, I think a kind of maybe got a power up or something like that i don't know Justin Hall, thanks for the five. Maybe have Luffy and Akainu share a spot since we don't know either of their full capabilities. Hoping Akainu makes his move soon. I'm going to I'm gonna ask a vote. Am I allowed to do ties? Am I allowed to do ties? I feel like that defeats the purpose of doing a top 30 because you should have to make the difficult decisions. But it could make a lot of people happier. I could also put Shanks and Mihawk in the same spot. Cynex, thanks for the five. If Akainu awaken conquers against Kuzan, I'd honestly place him above Prime Garp. Yeah, if he awaken conquers, then he's like, I don't know about above Prime Garp, but he rockets up the list. He's easily above Luffy or whatever, right? If you give Akainu conquers hockey, it's crazy. Um, and if Sengoku has it, I don't see a scenario where Akainu doesn't. Uh, it might just be difference in how Oda wants to write the two characters. Bunfagum, thanks for the two. More, because Zoro, if, if Akainu is not going to be Luffy's one of Luffy's endgame opponents, then Oda has no reason to give Akainu Advanced Conqueror's hockey. Because if Akainu's not going to be beaten by Luffy, well, then you need to make Akainu beatable by somebody else, right? If Akainu gets Advanced Conquerors, then, like, there's no fucking way Sabo's going to beat him. Sabo, as is, has almost no shot of beating him. So in that case, you definitely don't want to power up Akainu more, you know? If Akainu is, for some bizarre reason, like, Dragon's enemy, maybe because of, like, a long-lost grudge or something like that, maybe when Dragon's passed or something, then maybe you give Akainu a power-up. I don't know. All right, so we can't do ties. Bunfagam, thanks for the two. Mork, Zoro, High Diff, Sengoku, and Rayleigh. Uh, I think I need a little bit more out of Zoro before I say, say something like that. No one thinks Rayleigh over Sengoku. <laughs> I guess I just like Rayleigh. That's why I was arguing with myself. Let's get the stream likes up to 500. Sinex, thanks for the five. If Akainu awaken conquerors against... Oh, no, we covered this. Um, Okay. All right, so no ties allowed. All right. Next up. Uh, I'm going to roll with... This is tough. This is fucking difficult. Zoro Sanji... But I'm going to eliminate some people that I know fucking aren't making top 30. I know that Kaku's not making top 30. I'm not putting Yuruj in top 30. I'm not putting Killer in top 30. Um, I'm not putting Inurashi. I'm not putting Nekomamushi. I'm not putting Jack. Yeah, let's just shave some shit down real quick. I'm not putting Jinbei. Um, Jinbei's strongest win is Husu. I'm not putting Jinbei in there. Um, we got Sengoku out of there. Oh, fuck. I got to rank Kong. I'm an idiot. Why did I include Kong? <sighs> I don't want to include Kong. Okay. <laughs> shit. <laughs> can't believe I included Kong. H-Man, thanks for the two. No matter what... No matter make spot one dock horse... Doc Q's horse is stronger. Okay. Um, <laughs> maybe. You never know. Muf Muafik Kubesi. Thanks. Mr. Morjit. Can you please say happy birthday to my friend Umba Singh? He's broke and can't super chat. Yeah, sure. Happy birthday, Umba Singh. Nick. Thanks for the two. Zoro solidly above every other Yonko commander except Beckman. I agree with that. Okay. Here's who I'm thinking... For the next group, right? For the next group, it's some combination of like Zoro. Wait, wait, wait I don't, I'm not gonna put it here. Okay, so we're looking at Zoro, Beckman. I'm just, I'm just going off of the order I, I put them in the list. Don't consider this ranked. King Katakuri. Like we're looking at the Yonko one or close to admiral level, right? Katakuri, Marco, Shiryu. I guess Crocodile. Boa, I guess Weevil, Kong, Sabo, Law, Kid, Yamato, is Luchi in there? Let's just throw him in there for sake of discussion. It's too hard to tell because we can't, we don't know how strong, how hard Luffy was fighting there. This is our next batch. We're going to figure this shit out. Oh, I'll throw in, I'll throw in Magellan.
right? So I can cross off these guys and cross off Zoro. Uh, you guys might dislike this, but I think uh, um, Sanji's in this discussion as well. Zoro, Burgess, Crocodile, Hancock. Note that just because someone made this batch doesn't mean that I put them as stronger than everybody else left behind, okay? Um, it just means that, like, they're worth discussing, you know? We might decide that, hey, you know what? Weevil's probably, probably doesn't deserve to be here at all. Let's throw him below, like, below some of these guys. Like, let's put him below Doflamingo and uh, Lucky Roo and all that shit, right? Um... I'm just saying it's worth discussing. You know what I mean? Like, I know Lucky Roo doesn't make the next cut, but technically we know so little about Weevil that maybe he does. That's the same reason I'm putting Sanji in here, because I think it's the other way. I think Sanji is stronger than other Yonko second commanders by a good deal, based on how he did against Queen towards the end. So I would say that there's an argument that Sanji might be above some of these characters. At the end of the day, we might put Sanji last out of these characters, but I think that there's an argument that he might be. Okay, let's get started. I'm putting Ben Beckman here first. Reason being, very simple. Um, among all of the Yonko, amidst among all the Yonko, I believe that Shanks' crew was noted to have... It was the only one that was noted in particular um, for, um, for the... Uh, the uh it's it's members the best balance of any pirate crew no soft targets here that's not saying that oh the shank the red-haired pirates are stronger as a crew than any of the other red than any of the other pirates but we know a few things we know that shanks's fleet is fucking ass which suggests that his core crew does have to be disproportionately a bit stronger to make up for that and the fact that the marines specifically talk about beckman rue yasop they don't really talk up the other characters much um, that leads me to believe that it's very likely that Shanks' crew might just have the edge over other Yonko commanders when you go down the line, right? So we're going to roll with that. Ben Beckman at 15. I don't think that should be controversial at all. It's Ben fucking Beckman. <sighs> then it gets controversial. Then it gets controversial. Then it gets very controversial. Let's roll. Zoro. I'll explain everything in a second before you guys start crying. Where does Shiryu go? 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 Where does Crocodile go? Where does Boa go? 
Did I cross off shooty by accident? Put Lucci over here. Crocodile. Where does Crocodile go? I'm assuming Crocodile has gotten stronger. Uh, this shit's hard. At this level, it's really difficult. Sinex, thanks for the five. In my mind, I don't think it's possible that Luffy won't fight Akainu at some point. If they fight to be comparable, Akainu kind of has to have conquerors. I'm I'm willing to put Akainu above Luffy. It's just, there's nothing there um, to put him, like, that we've seen, you know? And there's, it, it, it it's purely based on the assumption that Akainu today has a totally different ability than what we saw before. Because we've seen so much of him fight. So it's not the same as, like, Dragon and Im, where we can speculate on story role because we've seen so little of their actual feats. It kind of weaves so many feats. He's actually one of the characters with the most feats in the story um, among top tiers. And his feats don't put him at the very, very top. They put him high, but not at the very top. But if we can assume that he got a power up, I might. Maybe I'll go back. Let me figure this shit out first. Mechlor, thanks for the five. Hi, Moich. First comment. I like Zoro greater than Beckman. Zoro scarred Kaido. Beckman got mocked and ignored by Kizaru. Um. I don't think getting ignored by Kizaru is that big of a deal at the end. Of, it's still Kizaru. Like, I put Kizaru above Zoro as well, you know? Um, I think if Zoro was like, Kizaru don't move, then Kizaru would probably still move and <laughs> shoot his lasers. I don't think Zoro could easily stop that either because Kizaru's fast. Um, not saying Zoro wouldn't do well against Kizaru. I'm just saying that, you know, a character ignoring a character and going on to do what their job is, I think is ultimately not the biggest deal. At the end of the day... Beckman did make Kizaru stop briefly, momentarily, um, just not permanently, and they didn't fight it out at the end of the day. Um, I put Beckman there just because I think that I'm not going to believe that the Straw Hats have passed up Shanks' crew till I see it, but I think it's possible. Um, let me explain some of these. So Beckman is Ben Beckman, right? Uh, I just think that he is the most status out of the first mates. I don't think I need to explain that. Uh, Zoro and Yamato advanced conquerors, Haki users, extremely good feats. Yamato fighting toe to toe with Kaido briefly. Um, Zoro, uh, like, obviously scarring Kaido, which is a huge fucking deal. Um, Ashra Zoro has an argument for being much higher up this list, but as we can see, he can only use it briefly so far. Again, advanced conquerors, Haki users, it's just a huge fucking deal, right? Um, and obviously, he pretty dominantly beat King once he got Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. Once he got Advanced Conqueror's Hockey, King basically didn't do shit to him. So, uh, I feel comfortable putting Zoro here, Yamato here. I think that's fine. Uh, Marco is great because Marco can't really lose to anybody below him. It's just that I don't think he has any way to beat a lot of the characters above him. Like, I imagine Advanced Con We know good enough Hockey can hurt Marco, right? Because we saw Garp hurt Marco at Marine Ford. So, Zoro and Yamato, as Advanced Conqueror's Hockey users... They should be able to fuck up Marco, right? They should be able to fuck up Marco. Um, Admirals probably have too much firepower and overall good hockey abilities for Marco to keep up with, but Marco can't really lose to anyone below him. We literally saw Marco in one of the most... Marco's feats are stupidly impressive across the course of the series, and I think a lot of people forget or take it for granted, but Marco... Honestly, he's got an argument for being even higher because uh, Marco, he was kicking King and Queen's ass 2v1 2v1 by himself yes he eventually got tired because he's not like a fucking admiral like he's not green bull you're not gonna expect him to beat them both at the same time he's not a yonko but for being a first mate to take on another yonko first mate and the second mate at the same time and be winning for the major like every single panel that they were on screen be winning for the fight right and the only thing he has to say is that well i can't do this forever i'll get tired yeah, Marco is clearly stronger than... There's no argument for King above Marco. There literally isn't because we saw the fight. Um, you could say, well, Marco has no way of, like, actually damaging King. That's probably true. King has no way of actually damaging Marco either. It would just be a continuous battle of Marco kicking his ass. And if you really want to get technical, Marco could. If it was just 1v1, Marco could literally just take King, drag him out to outside Onigashima, and throw him in the fucking water. Like, go back... If you don't believe me, go back and look at the panels... 
Marco was effortlessly handling King. Effortlessly is probably too much because he was getting tired, but Queen was involved as well, right? Every single panel was Marco slapping those, slapping those two idiots around. So if we really want to get technical, if it was just 1v1 Marco versus King, neither of them are hurting each other, but Marco is basically manhandling him. Eventually he could find some way of basically taking him out of commission, be that throwing him in the ocean, whatever. It doesn't matter. But there's no, there's zero argument for King over Marco because we literally saw it on page. So for you to argue it the other way, there's, it would be basically pure headcanon that there's, there's nothing to argue. We also know that like just the sheer firepower that Marco has stopped over the course of the series, he has stopped attacks from every single, like pretty much all the top tiers we've seen kind of, right? Like most of them, the strongest devil fruits, Akainu, he stopped serious attacks from Akainu. He has stopped the most powerful attack Kizaru has ever shown. He has overpowered Big Mom and Prometheus, her number one homie. Prometheus is her number one homie. Marco straight up overpowered her. On top of that, Marco literally made Big Mom leave. That doesn't mean Marco's stronger than Big Mom or anything like that, but you just can't really compare him to these other characters, like King, Katakuri, Sabo, etc., because he's the only character that, very literally, uh, a Yonko who was in a 2v1, Big Mom and Perispero, a Yonko was facing off him, uh, off against him head on and was basically like, you are too difficult for me to fight right now. I have no way of easily putting you down. I will have to exit this conversation. That's a Yonko. So there's not really any argument for any of the other Yonko first mates because Marco just has by far the most feats. He has by far the most hype from other top tiers. The way Big Mom's talked about him, the way the Gorosei talked about how Marco could potentially be the only other pirate out there that can take out Blackbeard. There's no discussion for anyone um, here to be above Marco. Like, none whatsoever. So, we have that um, out of the way. I don't want to hear any Marco being lower than anyone else discussion. It's just not possible. Uh, too many feats, unparalleled feats amongst all of these characters in this tier, and way more outside hype. Joy Boy 56 is Ben greater than Rayleigh. I think that's possible, but it's not, like, not enough information for us to really say. So right now I'm going to go with Rayleigh because we've seen more. Basim El Madawi, thanks for the five. Noland and Kalgara feel like the Yonko of their time. I will say that Akainu is holding back to not destroy Marine Ford. Fighting 11 commanders equal... Um, fighting 11 commanders is similar to Kaido versus Scabbards. Um, yeah, I think you could say that, but at the same time, then, what do we have right now? We, we know that, like, Akainu fought Aokiji all out for um, 10 days, and they were about equal. So, like... I don't think Aokiji is that strong in the grand... Like, I mean, I've got him pretty high, but I'm saying I don't think Aokiji scales to, like, higher than... Lu like, last we saw Aokiji's getting kind of wrecked by Garp, you know? I still think he'll win the fight in the end of the day, but um, I don't think I've seen anything from Akainu or Aokiji that puts them in that same tier as, you know, um, like Kaido just yet. Not, not same tier, like, maybe they're round there, but... I think Akainu would need a power-up. I think he needs Advanced Conqueror's Hockey to be there. Okay, so Marco is there. I think no discussion to be had. Ramen Stains, thanks for the two. I'd honestly put Marco above Ben and probably Rayleigh. It's just because of the way that um, Shanks's Yonko commanders were specifically hyped, but you could argue Marco has the same level of hype as Ben Beckman. I think ultimately I just give greater value to Hockey than even a really good Devil Fruit um, because the series gives greater value to Hockey, which is why I put... Ben Beckman, Zoro, and Yamato above Marco. Miss Super from Mufa Kabesi. Sorry, I missed that one. Let me, let me, I was supposed to go back to that one. Let's see, let's see. Thanks for the two. Nobody caught the Amba Singh joke. Shake my head. I don't know it. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, SMX Wing, thanks for the five. Um, perceived less guaranteed than Emu being an opponent for Luffy, so that's number one. I think it's a much shakier perceived story element. And two, Akainu, we've already seen so much of him fighting, right? It's not the same as Im, where we have the perceived future story role plus the complete mystery as to what he can actually do. Akainu, it's like we know that we, we can guess at a perceived story role, which is being an opponent for Luffy down the line, but he's also fought so much already that um we already in th like we know basically based on everything we know he should be equal to aokiji it's basically it should be pretty much the same it should be out kind of aokiji so it would have to be like a huge jump to say in my mind like it's just a bit 
everything's on a spectrum of like how much are you willing to speculate versus how much are you um, basing it on things we've seen. I think to me, it's just like one step too far in terms of speculation to say that, hey, a Kainu got advanced conquerors hockey, you know? Um, I wouldn't be surprised and I like to believe it, but I think it just goes a bit too far. I, I think a Kainu is stronger than Luffy at this point, but um, it's based on something that's really, really hypothetical, you know? Sleeping Danger, thanks for 14. Why is Cat so high he loses to everyone below him? Um, I could I, I could see Sabo beating Katakuri because it's a bad matchup. Not everything's about matchups because in general it should be more so like, in general, who can you beat, right? Because maybe you just have one bad matchup here or something like that. I put Marco high because in general he should beat everyone below him, right? Um, Katakuri obviously beats Law, Katakuri obviously beats Kid. Um, obviously is maybe a strong word, but like, here's the thing with Law and Kid. They are literal hockey scrubs. It cannot be state like emphasized enough how fucking god awful their hockey is. They are absolute scrubs. Law literally cannot, cannot, f like fucking forget advanced armament hockey. He cannot coat his blade in hockey. He cannot do a black blade at all. Period. It's fucking ridiculous. They are hockey scrubs. They're beyond scrubs. He can't do the same shit that fucking Smoker in Punk Hazard could do. They are scrubs. Neither of them have ever had a good win 1v1. Never had a good win 1v1. They are coasting off of their good-ass devil fruits. If you put... Like, we saw what happens to Kid when you put him up against... <laughs> you put Kid up against a Future Sight user. Like, we saw what Shanks did to him. Obviously, Katakuri doesn't have that level of, like like damage output but that's not the point the point is that if if shanks can see kids moves coming why would katakuri not be able to see kids moves coming you get what i'm saying like obviously the way that katakuri counters is going to be very different but katakuri can obviously dodge a railgun there's nothing that kid can do that katakuri wouldn't be able to dodge there's nothing that law could do that katakuri wouldn't be able to dodge right it, we, we already saw how good future sight is against a character of that level who's not good at uh, hockey in general. I don't know how Law... Like, if you can give a good explanation of how Law and Kid would hit um, uh, Katakuri, then I'd be interested. But uh, I can't see them doing that. So next, thanks for the five. Pound should be top ten for blowing Big Mom's back out. <laughs> uh, better feats than Marco against her in defying certain death, to be honest. I, I kind of agree. Kekker's boy says, thanks for the five. Akainu is Sabo's fight not, fight, not Luffy's. Sabo's inheriting Ace's will and needs to take on his killer. See, I don't personally agree with that argument. I see the merit of the argument. I don't personally agree. But just because we have something like that as like a prominent argument in the community, that also makes me less inclined to be confidently pushing Akainu above Luffy. Um, Reflexi, thanks. My homies Usopp and Nami will make it up there in a couple years. Mark my words, they won't get ignored for much longer. <laughs> Sleeping Danger... Oh, no. Are you saying... Sleeping Danger. Are you saying Kid and Law are weaker than Whole Cake Island Luffy? Am I saying they're weaker than Whole Cake Island Luffy? Um, I think Whole Cake Island Luffy has a good shot at beating both of them. Um, because he has Future Sight and they don't. <clears throat> Alright. I thought about that for a second. It doesn't seem right right that doesn't seem right but i also don't get how they would lose or how they would beat katakuri how would they hit him how would they hit him i'm open to okay i'm open to listening i'm open to listening how would they hit him how would they hit him with marco and king i'm not going to hear a discussion for law and kid they're not above marco or king because in those cases they literally can't do damage to them so you need advanced conquerors hockey to, you need good hockey to damage these guys. But I'm open to listening to Katakuri because Katakuri, he can be damaged. He just has to be hit. So I just need to know how they, how do they hit him? Your Lord says they have good feats against Big Mom. Yeah, but in a 2v1. So that's the thing. We don't know if they'd be able to land these hits on Big, like, would they be able to land these hits if the other person wasn't distracting them? So you guys got to remember, these are not team fights. These are 1v1. Okay, so all the Big Mom shit, throw that out the window. 
The question is, could they hit Katakuri if they don't have their buddy distracting Katakuri, right? So they have to do it by themselves, like, like, like big kids, all right? Can they do it by themselves? How would they do it? I just need to hear the argument for it. Michael Goodwin, thanks for the five. Since Law and Kid are hockey losers, they are, shouldn't a spe specialist like Sanji and direct rival of Zoro be higher? He's countered Katakuri's future site on rated feet. I'm inclined to put Sanji above Law and Kid. I genuinely am. I just know people will get very upset. We have to do this, these things in steps, basically, right? So first we got to establish where we want to put Law and Kid. Then we can kind of bring Sanji into the equation. Not a pro 64, thanks for the five. Morge, be so for real right now and say on God that two or even three Katakuris or end of Hokkaid Island Luffy's beat Big Mom, be serious. Um, but... I would say no, but here's the thing. Are they allowed to use 10,000 tons of dynamite in the fight? Is it three Luffy's or three Katakuri's versus Big Mom? Or is it three Katakuri's plus 10,000 tons of dynamite? Because you have to remember, and this is very, very fucking important, Kid and Law did not beat Big Mom in a straight fight. They got very, very lucky because the situation involved 10,000 tons of fucking dynamite in Onigashima going off in front of her face. Okay, so let's be very, very clear there. It was at the point that their involvement in the fight was pretty much done. Big Mom was ready to basically get back up. She fell through a hole because they happened to be fighting on an island 10,000 meters in the sky. She fell through the hole, got blown up by dynamite, and that's how they won. And then she fell through lava and couldn't get back up. That's not the same... Like, we're if we're saying in a fight, we're not saying in that specific situation. We're saying general fight i don't know what you want to think dragon ball z open field or whatever because in that case kid and law also lose that fight the second thing you have to consider is that sometimes abilities work really really well in the situation so law's ability is really really well suited to being good in a team fight because it can do a lot of good internal damage right so that's really useful against top tiers in a team fight because in a team fight law doesn't have to create his own openings in a 1v1 that's very different because in a 1v1, Law has to create his own, his own openings, right? So if he has to create his own openings, that's different, right? We're not trying to scale, like, how well would Law and this person do in a team fight versus how well would, like, three Katakuris do in a team fight. That's not the same thing. Tell me who wins 1v1. The other argument is irrelevant. Sleeping Danger, thanks. Kid can assign Katakuri to the floor and he can't move. Yeah, but Kid would have to hit Katakuri with a sign. A sign works by, like, you know, there's something that Kid actually projects out. And Kid can't hit Katakuri. Ramen Stains, thanks for being a Yonko team member for nine months. Law, Law could do some stuff with Room and Shambles to get hits on Katakuri. Still think he doesn't take it, though. Thanks for being a Yonko team member. That's what I'm saying. Like, to me, Katakuri is a terrible counter to Law because Law's abilities are, like, terrible as in really good counter to Law, is what I mean, because Law works a lot on trickery, right? Katakuri is maybe the smartest, most situationally aware and observant fighter that we have in the story. I think it would be very, very, very fucking difficult for Law to land any of his bullshit on Katakuri. Because Katakuri literally knows what's coming, and he's such a malleable character. He can move around pretty much any and all attacks. You need generally, like, really good a AOE or something like that, in my opinion, to beat Katakuri. D Marquez, thanks for the two. More, do you think current Garp could beat Kid and Law? Do I think current Garp could beat Kid and Law? Do I think current Garp could beat Kid and Law? Do I think current Garp could beat Kid and Law? Um, it's so tricky like it's the dynamite involved again I think Big Mom's just fucking dumb which is a big part of that fight just her being stupid Garp's a stupid character IQ wise but I, I don't get the sense he's stupid battle IQ wise so I don't know I'm gonna say maybe no Ty is saying Luffy, did, people are saying Luffy didn't 1v1 Kaido, etc. How's that relevant? We're not ranking Luffy. Um, if Luffy did beat Kaido 1v1, then maybe, like, pure 1v1, maybe I'd put him even higher on the list. We're, we're basing Luffy's ranking on the understanding that he didn't beat Kaido in a pure 1v1. It's not the same thing at all. Um, like, I never made the argument that Luffy beat Kaido in a pure 1v1. Tala, thanks for the seven. Law was fast enough to intercept a swing from Kaido and teleport Zoro out. If a hybrid Kaido advanced conquers Haki Thunder Bagua couldn't put Law down, then Katakuri can't. This is a very, very good argument. The stamina argument. I would agree with that. The stamina argument is there. 
does Katakuri have the the physical damage output to take out either either of these characters? I'm going to say he can take out Kid. I think he can't take out Law. The reason he can take out Kid is because uh, Katakuri can suffocate Kid under Mochi, as he did to Luffy. Luffy just ate his way out. But Kid can eat a lot, too. This is so fucking stupid. I'm scaling it based on whether or not... But this is One Piece logic. I have to scale a little bit based on whether or not the character can eat their way out of a suffocating trap. Law can teleport himself out of any traps Katakuri does. Oh, this pains me so much. All right, Law and Kid above Katakuri. I see the argument. Katakuri wouldn't be able to damage them enough. But that's the only reason. It'd be one of those where, like, they can't do anything to Katakuri for pretty much the entirety of the fight at all. But over time, Katakuri would be worn out. Which is an irritating way to scale, but it is basically just the reality of how it goes. Yeah, I think stamina endurance-wise, you just got to give it to them in that sense. It, yeah, it would basically be caught like they would never get a hit on Katakuri, but eventually Katakuri would just get tired. It's just the way it is. Sun, thanks for the five. Katakuri is pillow punches, can't beat KO base Luffy, law survive. Yeah, yeah, you guys are right. You guys are right. You guys are right. I think you guys were wrong with the initial arguments you were using. I'll maintain that because they can't hit him, and I maintain that there's no evidence that they can hit him. But I think that these new arguments of stamina, I concede that I'm incorrect on that. Law survives Thunder Bagua, kept up with Blackbeard speed. He can cut Katakuri from range. Blackbeard speed? What? What? Blackbeard? Isn't Blackbeard one of the fucking slowest characters? Blackbeard can't even catch Beppo. <laughs> but I get what you're saying. He can cut Katakuri from range. Law could... No, he can't. Katakuri can dodge. There's so many characters that dodge Kata, like Law's fucking attacks without having Future Sight. Katakuri would have an easy time dodging Law's attacks. He would have probably the easiest time dodging Law's attacks out of anyone in the story. Save for, I suppose, Shanks. Masuzio G, thanks for the two. Or Kizaru. Kid can 100% hit with hit rate real gun with a sign on most people. Yeah, but not Katakuri. Okay. All right. We're going to bump this down. Now we got some other characters th to throw in. I don't know how the fuck we rate these guys. And it looks like our top 30 is about to be rounded out with these. So we don't even get to these boys. Mechlord, thanks for the two. Can Katakuri damage or outlast Queen? Maybe Queen greater. Ah, oh, god damn it. No, oh, now we gotta look at Tala's post. I really don't want to. Ah, uh, oh, shit. Okay, before we get to Queen, how about this? Before we get to Queen, let's try and throw these guys in. Um, Let me just say this real quick. Sabo is by far the most... I don't want to hear shit about Sabo. He is by far the most overrated character on this list i'm putting him this high so people don't cry but he is his only good feat one he has one good feat it is beating jesus burgess that is it he has no other good feats he did not do jack shit at marijua did not do jack shit at marijua was fucking useless against the admirals didn't do jack shit against Mar at marijua even when the admirals were fucking holding back and he didn't do shit against fujitora either when fujitora wasn't trying isn't that fucking crazy when Sabo was trying and Fujitora was not trying, he didn't do shit there either. Sabo has no feats, it's insane. I don't know why Sabo, like, if I see one more person say that Sabo's underrated, I'm gonna fucking flip because right now I'm overrating the fuck out of him. He has done nothing. Jack shit. He has no way of hurting King. He has no way of hurting Marco. He is not doing shit to characters that are actually good at advanced conquerors hockey because Sabo is a little baby armament hockey user and these are big boys who actually have strong wills and have conquerors hockey and know how to use it so i he's not going any fucking higher on this list and he's not fucking with admirals because he has never fucked with admirals all right i don't want to hear shit about sabo i don't know why i'm putting him above law and kid do i hate law and kid so much that <laughs> is this what it's come to oh my god law's actually law fought with blackbeard if sabo fought with blackbeard you know what happened same shit that happened to ace same thing. Joe, thanks for five. Marco is so overrated. He does no lasting damage to anyone in Marine Ford Wano. He can only stall people. Gar Garp could three shot him. It doesn't matter if Garp can three shot him because we're not putting him above Garp. Um, Marco has a lot of the. Like, Marco just says. I'm not. Marco can only go so high because his offensive output is so much, but he can beat everyone below him, and that's what matters. And, like, you have to consider. 
no matter what you th- want to say about like Marco can only stall people and such. Strong characters view Marco as a problem. Big Mom, a fucking Yonko, said that she can't deal with him right now, and she left. And she was in a two v one situation. That's fucking huge, right? Like consider how Big Mom views Marco versus how she views Kid in Law. Scrubs that basically like were an inconvenience till they got very very lucky through two v one sneak attacks etc. And a ten thousand tons of TNT to basically cheese the fuck out of her. But Big Mom does not view it like. Just consider the interaction between Marco and Big Mom, which felt more like, yeah, you're a real challenge that I don't have an easy way to deal with. I have to exit versus these two fuckers keep hitting me with random bullshit when I'm distracted with the other one. And not none of it's doing anything to me for the most part. But, oh, fuck, I fell down this hole. And then, oh, fuck, these bombs that were conveniently planted there for them. Now I'm fucked out of some weird ass, cheesy, <laughs> really, really forced victory by these hockeyless devil fruit reliant scrubs that's basically that was the internal the hidden internal monologue text that uh (laughs) that i uh read into that scene by the way i'll just share that with you but i think that's a big deal that like even very strong characters view marco as a very difficult opponent to beat i think that's a really really big deal um obviously he can't put down these top tier guys but uh you don't have to we're not putting him above them um he beats anybody below him though okay um Anthony Screw, thanks for the five. You think Green Bull is weak? God damn it. I'm down here fighting for my life, talking about Sabo, Law, Kid, etc. The characters that people like actually want to debate and stuff. You're trying to make me go back up to Green Bull and debate Green Bull's position? You think Green Bull is weaker, but he damaged Fuji and Haki leaves scars, Logi are not, and Green Bull was clean. Fuji was also not afraid to hold back in Marijua. Dude, I mean, all I gotta say is like, we don't know if Green Bull was damaged either because we saw that Fujitora had scars, but we didn't see Green Bull again in that time frame, right? We saw Green Bull two weeks down the line when he was uh, arriving at Wano, but we saw Green, but we saw Fujitora much more shortly after the the what do you call um, the uh, the uh, the reverie, right? So we don't know what Green Bull's damage was at that point in time. We have no idea what happened. Um, Green Bull also said that he didn't want to fight Fujitora when Akainu ordered Green Bull to arrest Fujitora. So you could you could view it either way. I'm if you want to mentally swap Fujitora and Green Bull, I don't know. Um, I don't think this like a lot of these characters can go and up can go up and down several spaces, except for Law and Kid, who can only go down spaces, and Sabo. Um, but you know, Sabo beating King is nonsensical. Sabo literally can't beat King. It has been established that you cannot hurt King. You cannot hurt Seraphim with just Ryo, and Sabo only has Ryo. What's Sabo going to do? Use fire against King? King has canonically better fire because Magma in One Piece is better than fire. King is better in every single regard than Sabo. There's nothing that Sabo could do to King. King would fuck up Sabo. Mechlor, thanks for the two. Hi, first time comment. These are not your first time comments, but I appreciate it. Caesar greater than Katakuri. That's true. That did happen canonically. Uh, Wait, did I miss something? Miss Super from Akash Panda? I don't want to miss from Akash Panda. He's been a long-time supporter. Not that I miss want to miss from anyone, but, you know. We're from Akash Panda. Oh, thanks for the two. How do you like Excel so far? Better than Paint? It is better than Paint objectively, but artistically speaking, I prefer... Uh, Microsoft Paint is just more fun to, for me to use. I feel more expressive. Excel, Google Spreadsheets, it's so cut and dry. Everything's in a box. Um, Under Jogger Ball, thanks for the two. Based off Big Mom fight and reactions, kid greater than law 1v1. I agree, but uh, we have to take a... Like, I used to make that argument, but we have to just take a look at what happened to kid recently and what law did recently, so we just gotta give it. Uh, D Marquez, thanks for the two. Sabo hate will not be accepted. Sabo over Yamato. Yamato would fuck up Sabo, that's for sure. All right. How would... Okay, I would love to hear what Sabo could possibly do to King. What could Sabo possibly do to King? There's nothing that Sabo could do to King. We are seeing right now Luffy, Zoro, Luchi, Kaku. Luffy, Zoro, and Luchi are all advanced armament hockey users. None of it does shit to Seraphims, meaning none of it does shit to Lunarians. Zoro could not damage uh, King. He could not even threaten damaging King until he got advanced Conqueror's hockey. There's nothing he can do to him. Stas uh, Salantov, thanks for being a member for nine months. First stream I'm watching live. Keep up the Ws. I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. 
I think I don't think that means that King is way stronger than Sabo though. I think that's like a bad matchup type thing to clarify. Okay, enough Sabo hate for me. Enough Sabo. Let me calm down. Enough Sabo hate. Ramen Sims, thanks for the two. Thanks for the two. Is Crocodile technically Yonko one? Yeah. So let's throw these guys in, and then we can kind of then we'll have our full list, right? Shiryu is so fucking hard to rate because in my mind, I don't think Shiryu. <laughs> I just I'm just like the invisibility fruit, really, in a world of observation hockey users. I can't imagine Shiryu beating Katakuri, let alone, like, Yamato, Zoro, Marco, Ben, like, like, is King a con- like, Shiryu a conqueror's hockey user? Like, what is it? Is Shiryu supposed to get a power-up before the end of the story? I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Not a Pro 64, missed my second super. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me check this. Give me a second. Um, cut list. Sanji should be where Sabo is. I'm, I'll put Sanji in in a second. I'll put Sanji in in a second. Um, and Tala says Miss Super. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Um, okay. Not a pro 64 says Luchi greater than Katakuri. Start of Wano Luffy got laid out by Kaido, not fully trying. Gear 5th Luffy named attacks, couldn't keep Luchi down. No way Hokik Island Katakuri can. That's true. That's true. I think Luchi, unfortunately, he just had the bad luck of fighting Luffy so late in the game that he's naturally going to look bad. Like, this is a Luffy with advanced observation, advanced armament, and in gear 5th. Um, the only thing he wasn't using was advanced conquerors. Yeah. Yeah, I think Luffy would beat Katakuri easier right now than he did Luchi. I think I gotta bump Luchi up. Tala, thanks for the 279. King needs speed mode for Sanji. Sanji wins easily. Um, I just don't think that's true. Because, like, I think we'll find out how Sanji would do against um, King with over the course of this Seraphim fight. We'll see what, what tactic Sanji will pull out against it. Because, to me, it's like... King could just stay in fire, like, he could just stay in, um, uh, in vulnerable mode and just spam fire or something like that, you know? And Sanji is the one who would eventually have to get tired from dodging, most likely, right? Um, but, that being said, I have a feeling that Oda's gonna show us whether or not Sanji can damage a Lunarian with this, um, next, uh, with this next fight. So, it's entirely, it's entirely possible Sanji's above King right now, but I'm not gonna put him there. I agree Luchi above Katakuri. I actually agree. Wait, but I'm going to go ahead and put Luchi above Kid. Could Luchi put down Kid? Luchi's got, like, assassinate techniques. I feel like... I know that's a very vague way of saying it, but... Katakuri just has punching for the most part. He has his trident, but, like... Katakuri's allowed to use his trident! This changes a lot. This changes a lot. This changes a lot. Okay, because we know that, like, fucking... Okay. <laughs> Katakuri stopped using his trident against Luffy. I feel like that's often forgotten. This has changed everything. This has changed everything. Because the argument for Katakuri was that Katakuri's punches can't put down Kid and Law. And I agree. But we know that stabby attacks, right, attacks that are actually puncturing you and shit, those are different, right? Oda tends to write that, like, you know... Um, uh, like, generally in One Piece, getting impaled tends to be pretty fucking bad, right? Think, like, like it's it's written very differently from the blunt attacks, right? Blunt attacks, Oda can go way overboard, like, characters take a bunch of damage from blunt attacks, but impaling is pretty bad in One Piece. Like, think Crocodile stabbing Luffy with a hook in all the way back in Alabasta, right? Think um, Luchi impaling Luffy with his... Uh, Shigan back at Water 7. These are usually written to be more damaging. Think Katakuri in that one chapter that we thought Luffy fucking died when he stabbed Luffy uh, with his trident, right? Can Luffy, can Law and Kid take a bunch of Katakuri's punches? Yes, they could probably take a million Katakuri punches. Can they take getting stabbed by Katakuri five or six times the way that Luffy got stabbed? And remember, Luffy got off easy getting stabbed by Katakuri because Luffy was at least using future like observation hockey somewhat to avoid. They're not good at observation hockey, and they will never be. So they will just take that hit straight on. This is this is seriously changing a lot of things, I'm thinking. I don't know. 
Anybody want to... I need some new defenses. New defenses for Kid in Law. New defenses for Kid in Law. Joshua, Joshua Alaya Ayala says, Kid in Law may resist Katakuri punches, but Katakuri would fill them with holes with a spear slash trident. Agreed. Basim El Madawi says, two, I think... Thanks for the two. I think Sanji greater than King, but he'd lose because he uses fire. Um... Yeah, I just don't know if Sanji can put down these characters like Marco and King and stuff. Everything and nothing. Like, we'll find out soon. Thanks for the two. Blackberry parts don't fight 1v1. Shiryu's overrated. Yeah, I'm going to put Shiryu lower till we see something. Sleeping Danger, thanks. Kid was stabbed by Killer and kept fighting. Yeah, but, like, that's getting stabbed, like, once. I'm saying, like, Katakuri's going to be stabbing him a lot. Because, again, they are never going to fucking hit Katakuri. Never, ever, ever, ever. Never going to hit Katakuri. Katakuri should be able to hit them a shit ton. Ramajan says more just coping very hard. I want to hear the argument. I don't know if I'm coping. I just want to hear the argument for why they would not be affected by Katakuri stabbing them like he did to Luffy in that one chapter repeatedly. Law has curtain. Law could teleport the trident. Ah, uh, kid has. Yeah, kid has metal. Uh, uh, okay. You know what? Fine. I'll keep him down there. I'll keep him down there. I think Luchi beats kid though. I think Luchi would be too fast for Kid. I think Luchi beats Kid. Okay. I agree. Yeah, Metal Pat. Yeah, Gosh Bandit says Metal Trident. Kid. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Sun, thanks for the five. Hey, Morge, question. Why is Akainu having coding to Richi, but you got Shanks greater than Mihawk due to his Haki Susano domain expansion, Alchemy, uh, Spirit Bomb? Because uh, the idea is that Shanks, we <laughs> it's two separate things, right? Shanks, we have gotten strong indications so far that he is a very, very, very good Conqueror's Hockey user to the point that like you've even got characters like Whitebeard talking about how phenomenal his Conqueror's Hockey is. So with Shanks, it's two separate things. One, we get the sense that he is one of, if not the best hockey users in the world right now, just because of the way he's been written and the way characters have talked about him. And two... We've already gotten confirmation pretty much by Kaido, or at least heavy, heavy, heavy implication by Kaido, that we still have not seen the limits of Haki. Because that's kind of what he's talking to Luffy about towards the end of the fight, which is he's basically saying that even advanced, like you've got advanced conquerors Haki, but even then you haven't hit the pinnacle. There's something higher, right? Roger was at something higher, right? So with Shanks, it's a different situation because you've got two things established. One, we don't know the depths of Conqueror's Hockey just yet. Two, if there's any character that has been strongly implied would be most likely to have the depths of Conqueror's Hockey, it would be Shanks. So there's things that are implied. With the kind it's totally different because it's like, there's nothing, like, there's, there's nothing that suggests that he has advanced Conqueror's Hockey, right? That has not been suggested at all. So it's literally just a blind guess that like, well, what if he got it after fighting Aokiji? You get what I'm saying? I think that's more of a jump to me. I still think it's a very likely jump because, you know, Hockey Blooms, Akainu has Fleet Admiral, role in the story. But it's also possible that Luffy doesn't fight him, in which case Oda probably isn't going to give Akainu more power up. So Akainu is just too difficult. Um, whereas Shanks, I think there's more evidence um, that suggests that he could have more up his uh, non existent sleeve. Ray Del Ninja, thanks for the five. Always enjoy watching your vids. Are you planning on ranking characters from 31 to 50? Nah, that's too boring. Oh, honestly, it's actually too much of a pain in the ass. That's the real reason. Captain Face, thanks for the two. Lock a damage king with K Room. Sure you above Sabo. Uh, why would K Room do it? Why would K Room do it? We already know that internal damage is not the key to damaging Lunarians because Ryo is already internal damage, right? And that hasn't done anything to them yet. Um, D Marquez, thanks for the two. Lucci's blitzing kid might even take law, not gonna lie. Yeah, kid and law, people are saying kid and law tanked a lot of really high level attacks. That's the thing, their stamina is crazy good at this point because that's all they have because they don't have hockey and uh, <laughs> they just don't have hockey. And they're not, like, Kid's not physically fast. Law can teleport around. Um, but they just don't have hockey. <laughs> uh, what do I even say about these two fuckers? Uh, it's like, yeah, could, could Lucci beat Kid in Law? My perspective is that Lucci did better against Gear 5th Luffy 
because he lasted two chapters basically right without luffy using advanced conquerors hockey given but he did about as well as i think law and kid would do i'll just give it to them out of respect for i don't know if they deserve respect but they can have it justice thanks for the two more who is the strongest swordsman mihawk All right, let's use these last, oh, that's true. Awakening drains them. God damn it, this is complicated. Awakening, dra I'm talking about them having more stamina than their opponents. And here the one thing that could put them over the edge drains their stamina. I'm putting Katakuri back over them. Fuck that. All right, it's done. All right, uh, we're reshuffling. We're reshuffling. All right. <clears throat> Completely forgot. I feel like that blows a huge fucking hole in the argument. Because you have to remember. Here's the thing you have to remember, right? Law, without his awakening, is not that big of a deal. He's really not. He doesn't do that much without his awakening. What has he done without his awakening? It hurt Doflamingo when Doflamingo was distracted. It hurt Kaido when Kaido was distracted with Gamma Knife. But he really doesn't do anything much without his awakening. He, d he didn't throw out any of the scenes that we've seen, right? Uh, he's very awakening reliant. Uh, if awakening drains his stamina, then, you know, Katakuri, you can say that, like, uh, he can't put out that much damage, sure. But he would outlast Law to the point that Law's Awakening would tire him out. Um, so until we resolve this sort of Awakening Stamina situation, there's no argument for them above Luchi or Katakuri. Because the one thing that they had going for them, the one thing they had going was, well, they're big damage tanks. And that's true. They are big damage tanks. But if using their actual offensive best moves drains their stamina, then it doesn't matter if they're big damage tanks because it gets negated over the course of the fight. And they run out of energy because they're not really... Uh, like in terms of fighting abilities they're not keeping up with most of the people above them so yeah makes sense um all right anyone saying yeah I, I need to hear the the counter argument because i don't think there is one because you have to remember 2v1 sure they got away with their shitty awakening stamina 2v1 plus all that fucking dynamite let's never forget the dynamite it was a 3v1 dynamite law kid and let's be honest the dynamite did most of the damage right um so 2v1, their awakenings, they got away with low stamina. 1v1, Kid gets one shot by Yonko. Law does well, but he's also against the weakest Yonko, who himself has the worst uh, damage tanking capability out of anyone. He takes more damage automatically by virtue of his ability, so it's not a good comparison to use against anything. Okay, so that stuff is settled there. Let's move it along. Um... Boa's fucking heart. Okay, I'm going to put Shiryu low for now because I just don't know what to do with him. Um, <laughs> that's not a good argument, but it's just I don't know what to do with him. Sleeping Danger, thanks for 14. Law was tired when using his Awakening four times. That's true. It's over. It's over. Thank you for bringing that up. Who was the person that brought that up? You, sir, are uh, the MVP of this, this, uh, this stream. Caleb Brown, thanks for the two. What if VC flashback takes place in Imu's memory? Wow, what an off-topic comment. But that would be interesting. That would be really interesting. Um, Imu's memory. I wonder if it would be a, a, a unreliable narrator then. Interesting. Okay, so we got Shiryu out of there. Where do I think Crocodile goes? Crocodile now is hard to place. Is Crocodile now, like, stronger than Doflamingo? I like to believe Crocodile became stronger, right? Um, let's get rid of Lucci. I'm just gonna get rid of Magellan because he has a good ability, but I think, like, if you want to talk about someone with low stamina, Magellan is the poster child for that. One, two, three, four, five. I think this rounds out my top, my, the rest of my five. It just matters where I put them. I don't think Crocodile is as strong as King, Sabo, Lucci, Katakuri. I don't think Crocodile's putting up a fight against Blackbeard like Law did. I don't know what the fuck, ki like... If we assume Crocodile has gotten stronger, that's the tricky thing. Like, what does that even mean? I'm going to put Crocodile here. I'm going to put Crocodile here. Uh, 
Fuck, what did I do? Um, Magnus Olsen, thanks. Luchi is weaker than Katakuri. Future side is too broken. But for whatever reason, like, Katakuri did well against Luffy in that scenario. You know, not well. Like, he was still getting wrecked, but, like, Luffy would, at this point, wreck Katakuri even easier. Like, look what Kaido did to Luffy in Act 1, right? Luffy now is, even if you don't think he's equal to Kaido, he's at least close. And he's probably stronger than base Kaido, at least, which is who, what Kaido was in when he um, wrecked Luffy in Act 1, right? So, like, the gap between Luffy right now and, and, uh, and Katakuri, it seems... Sorry, the, la the gap between Luffy and Luchi right now seems smaller than the gap between Kaido and Luffy, therefore between Kaido and Katakuri back in uh, Act 1. So that's the only reason I'm rolling with that. But uh, I could see Katakuri being above Luchi. Under Dragon Ball, thanks for the five. You've talked me into every take, but Kizaru... Oh, thanks. Kizaru slash Fuji greater than Garp. You think they're even surviving the initial beatdown? Can they tank Galaxy Impact? I'm going to be honest, the section of the, the tier list that I thought the least about was definitely this section. I don't think I put that much thought into this section. Um, this section I put thought into... I'm going to go ahead and put a Kainu and then Luffy. Just feels right. Uh, no, I can't. I can't, this, I can't figure this shit out. I don't know what to do with... I don't fucking know what to do with this section. All right. Um... I don't know what the fuck to do with this section. Um, this section I really didn't put too much thought into. Um, I I don't care. You can put Garp here. You can put then Kazara Fujitora. I don't know. Um, fuck it. This is purely because I like Garp. And yeah, I think that Kizaru is maybe lacking a little... I think these Admirals have a bit more to prove. Like Akainu and Aokiji... Akainu's really earned his stripes over Marine Ford. A Aokiji, we have to rate him... We have to scale him to Akainu because of the 10-day battle. These Admirals have done a lot less. And Garp showing up in New England Galaxy Impact, that's true. That is a big deal. So, I'm fine bumping Garp up. Um, Mechlor, thanks for the two. Sanji greater than Queen, greater than Seraphim, greater than Luchi. <sighs> The Seraphim, I don't know how to scale, though. I don't know I don't know how to scale the Seraphim yet, because it's just too fucking difficult. It's like, the Seraphim, we know that they should lose these fights to the Straw Hats, but they're, they're just not <laughs> yet. <laughs> so, I don't know. The Seraphim might just be really bad matchups for certain characters. Um, I'm not doing anything. Like, okay, okay, let me put it this way. For Sanji fans, I think Sanji could be as high. This is going to sound crazy. If Sanji is able to do something damage-wise that allows him to beat the Seraphim, if he's able to do something damage-wise that allows him to beat the Seraphim, then I would put him as high as, like, around here, 17 or 18. Like, maybe, like, if he can damage the Seraphim, he can probably do something to damage Marco, in which case Sanji would probably be with Marco. Um, and then it depends how much you value his speed versus Yamato. Like, if Sanji does... If I'm judging based just off of what Sanji did in Wano... I think he's lower. Um, I I think that he's supposed to scale below Kid. Um, but if I scale based off what I think is about to happen in the story, then maybe it's here. But we need to actually see how he beats the Seraphim. Because if it's not through damage, but instead through some other random shit, like he kicks the Seraphim into the ocean or something, right? Um, I wouldn't view that as quite this... I, I don't know. Then I'm like, well, how... Is that, like, an effective strategy against everybody? I don't know. So Sanji's tricky to, to scale right now, in my opinion. Um, we got Crocodile out of the way. We got Crocodile out of the way. Tala, thanks for the seven. Kid and Law give a better fight to everyone on the list than Katakuri would. You're hyper-focused on the matchup. F Future Sight isn't a speed either. That is very true. I specifically said that... Um, Future Sight isn't a speedy... I'm not going to address that part, but I did specifically say that this isn't matchup-based. Should be how they do against everybody. And that's true. Because Katakuri, I just don't see him doing shit to any of these characters at all. Whereas Kid and Law, I can see the argument. Okay. That is a good point.
Whoops. Law gets bumped up. I wouldn't be surprised. You know what? Let's put Kid here. I think Kid and Law should probably just be together. I'm going to put Crocodile above Katakuri. I feel like that's very possible at this point in the story. Um, yeah, let's roll with this for now. Boa Hancock. There's two ways to look at... Boa Hancock's too hard to scale. Because there's two ways to look at it. You could say that... Well, Law gave Blackbeard a much better fight than Boa Hancock did. On the other hand, you could say that... Well, Boa Hancock... Just by virtue of her ability, it's either you win right away, which she could have against Blackbeard, or you don't. So it's not really fair. I'm just going to go... I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to rate her a bit lower, just because her ability is too difficult to, to rate, if that makes sense. So I'm going to... Yeah, I think Katakuri would not be caught off guard by her. Honestly, Law and Kid would probably lose... <sighs> It's just too hard to rate her. It's just like, is a character fast and savvy enough to just go after her right away? I'm just going to put her just below Katakuri. I think that might be wildly underrating her. Because I think it's just, she falls into the NL category for me where it's just like, it's too hard to rate them. I'm going to put several asterisks behind her. Because I, I think out of all the characters on this list, it's the hardest to rate her. Because she could honestly be, like, up here or something like that. Like, I could see the argument that she's supposed to be above Yonko Commanders. Um, I think she's definitely below... The only character I'm pretty... I, I'm pretty sure she falls definitely below these characters, basically, right? So this might be wildly low. It's just... How do I... Like, how do you rate her? You know, like, she lost instantly to Blackbeard. But if Blackbeard was slightly slower, if then she probably beats him instantly, you know? Um, like, maybe Luchi's too fast, Law's too smart to get hit by that, maybe. We also don't know how how, how Hockey interacts with it, because Law's like, Hockey can counteract Hack's abilities, but it's like, well, if once you're turned to stone, can you even use Hockey? Um, I feel like Kid would get fucked up by her. Um... Zoro wouldn't be affected by the ability. I feel like Yamato wouldn't be affected by the ability. I don't know how to put... I don't know. Sleeping Dangerous says, How Croc greater than Kid other than you don't like Kid? Oh, this is not like... I'm assuming that Crocodile got stronger over the course of the, course of the time skip. Um, I'm assuming Crocodile got stronger over the course of the time skip. That's why. I'm, I'm like kind of... Like, I'm kind of like... He's he must have just improved over the time skip, and he's like a Yonko first mate now. That's how I view it. Uh, because he he plays that role in Cross Guild. Thomas Botan, thanks for the two. Croc Kid plus others get one shot by Magellan. I think stupid characters could get one shot by Magellan, but I also think all these characters can one shot Magellan, because Magellan took s serious damage from pre time skip gear two Luffy, which is ridiculous. Um. Missing supers? Let me take a look. Kingpin93 says, Still taking Dofi or Versanji, as wild as that sounds. I disagree. Um, Gold DA thanks for the five. Strong doesn't mean they can't get got by another in the list. I agree. Katakuri is insanely strong, but could get got by a lot of these used to his low to your ability. Yeah, so you're kind of like looking over the course of it. Like, Ultimately, the problem with Katakuri, compared to like other commanders like Marco and King, like other first mates, like Marco and King, is... Uh, like, Katakuri's whole thing is he's really, like, these guys just won't take damage. Katakuri's just extremely difficult to damage. And just not being able to take damage is just inherently better than having to dodge a lot, even if you're really good at dodging. Um, so I think over the course of the list, Katakuri probably just does worse than a lot of other characters. Um, I think I've caught up on everything. Um, Bo Hancock... I think, like, people are saying she has Advanced Conquerors Hockey and stuff. No, that's, like, she might, but that's a huge leap. Advanced Conquerors Hockey is crazy, 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 crazy fucking rare in the story. Like, just because characters have Conquerors Hockey, like, Doflamingo has Conquerors Hockey, you know? 
Lots of characters have Conqueror's Hockey. Chinja has Conqueror's Hockey. Like, that's a dime a dozen. Advanced Conqueror's Hockey, unless you have actual evidence of characters, like, splitting the sky and doing Advanced Conqueror's Hockey shit, I'm not giving that to Boa Hancock. She might, but, like, she's generally... It's not... She's never been talked about in the story, like, she's a Yonko or she's a top tier. Um, if she was that level of fighter then I don't think Blackbeard would be able to catch her that easily. You know what I mean? Like, I, the sense I get from Boa Hancock is that her outside of her Devil Fruit, she's a really good fighter still. She has good hockey. But there's nothing to suggest that she's at the level of these other characters without um, without her Devil Fruit. That's the problem. Um, because she hasn't done anything. The Kuja are renowned for their hockey, but that doesn't mean anything because we know the context, right? They're, they can all use hockey, which is a big deal because their island is in paradise, not the New World. But Marigold and Sandra Sohn, like, the next two best fighters of the Elite Kuja, they lost to... to they got low diffed by no hockey, pre-time skip, gear two Luffy. You get what I'm saying? So, I'm not just going off of the Kuja's reputation as being good at hockey, as meaning it's like, Boa Hancock is a Yonko level fighter, right? That's like saying, the Wano Samurai are feared around the world, therefore, like... Ashura Doji is like like none of the Wano samurai that we showed that we saw in Wano were like anywhere near top tier. Um so Boa Hancock, it's tricky because she hasn't shown anything out like her fruit is what's broken, right? She herself was probably a very good fighter, but she didn't put up as good of a fight as Law did against Blackbeard. That's the only way we can really scale her. Um I'm gonna keep her there for now, but uh I'm gonna get rid of the asterisk to because then a lot of characters could have Astrid. No, no, because she's the one that I'm most questionable about. Because I do think that with her fruit, she could be higher. Oh, no, Jaguar, well, thanks for the two. Okay, but what if Katakuri is water, crocodile is cooked? Yeah, I guess, but, like, let's just assume it's a neutral location. I don't think Boa Hancock has ever shown advanced hockey, basically. Right? I think we're we're at a point in the story where it feels like we're running into so many characters with advanced hockey that we would just assume that they have it, but you need to you need to actually show it before you, you can assume that they have it. Like, Doflamingo was also very built up as a character, and it turned out he had no... We just didn't know about advanced hockey at the time, right? You have to get later... I don't know. Um, you have to, like, remember that just because certain things are becoming common now doesn't change the fact that... Um, we can assume that they're common amongst other characters that we've already met, right? Unless those characters have already been established to be top-tier fighters or really good at hockey or something, right? Um, like, let me put it this way. If we had not gotten, like, Doflamingo just yet in the story, then I bet a lot of people would be assuming, like, oh, he must have advanced Conquerors, and he must have, like, advanced Observation and stuff like that. But no, the reality is that those things are really rare. Even amongst, like, Shichibukai, like Doflamingo and Boa Hancock, um that are a big deal in the new world, it's still really, really rare. Like, the only Shichibukai that we're confirmed is a top tier so far is Mihawk, because I don't think, um, uh, like, top tier hockey is supposed to be that common in One Piece. Pierce Sullivan, thanks for the five. Frankie is my favorite straw hat. Do we think that an end of story, Pluton-powered Frankie breaks into top 30 or 50? Can he break into top 50 any other way? I think he would break top 50 for sure. Top 30 is just so fucking competitive. It's like, maybe. Okay. Um, so we got rid of Boa. Where do we put Weevil? Where do we put Weevil? Oh, this is perfect. We just need three more characters. Where do we put Weevil? I have a feeling Weevil's really strong. The only thing we know is that Weevil's below Green Bull. He's supposed to be comparable to a young Whitebeard, but we don't know how much of that is just hyperbole. I feel like Weevil could be a big fucking deal, though. Especially if he's, like, Whitebeard clone DNA or anything. Timothy McQueen, thanks for the five. All Law does with his fruit is throw rocks, and all Kid does with his fruit is throw steel beams. Beams greater than rocks equals Kid greater than Law. Um, <laughs> I think Law has shown a bit more versatility with the fruit. I don't know. Um, hmm. where the fuck do I put Weevil? I feel like Weevil's stronger than Shiryu. This is really random, but I'm just gonna... I, I don't know what the fuck to do with Weevil. <laughs> At this point, I'm just guessing. Why do I think Weevil's stronger than Shiryu? I don't know. 
Weevil's a character where basically I wouldn't be surprised if he turns out to be a lot stronger than we expect, but for right now, I feel like he doesn't. Why am I putting Weevil above, like, Lucky Roo and Queen and shit? You know? I just feel like Weevil's a big deal. He's compared to a young Whitebeard. I feel like he should be in the top 30, but I don't know what, what to do with him. All right. Okay, then we got Kong. Um, Kong is basically an admiral, but old. So, I mean, a formal fle former fleet admiral, but old, right? That's kind of a big deal. Let's throw Kong in here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Kong could fuck up some of these characters. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, Bad Magic says Weevil is strong because he has his own independent party without a crew or anything. Yeah, there's stuff like that. Like, there's so many ca there's characters here that I'm like, I'll put some asterisks next to Weevil, too. Where it's just like it feels like it's almost random guessing. Where's Kong supposed to fall? Can Kong beat Marco? Can Kong beat King? King Kong? <laughs> Can Kong beat Luchi? Because we know what we know. Prime Kong should be above these guys, right? Big three fan voices. Kong is a bum. Kong is no feats. I don't think you can place him. Interesting, interesting title says Morge. How is Sengoku so much higher than Kong? Um, couple factors. One, only Garp and Sengoku are referred to as the legendary Marines of their time. Um, so to me, those are the two Marines that really matter. Um, just because Kong was Fleet Admiral before, and like, so that's one, right? So Kong or the, Kong and sorry, Garp and Sengoku were the two Marines that really were built up the most as having a legendary reputation. And two, Kong is older than even Garp and Sengoku are. So, however declined Garp and Sengoku are, Kong should be even more, de sorry, more declined than that. So, it's like, in their primes, they were stronger, and they've fallen off less. Kong's prime was lower, and he's probably fallen off more. That's my logic. JMT93, thank you. I don't know what the fuck to do with Kong. I really don't. I'm stuck now. Is Robin V says, is Kong even a character anymore? Or is he retconned? Dude, I don't know. Where the fuck do I put Kong? It'd be hilarious if Kong never shows up again. Lol says, Ender Ayanami. What do I do with Kong? I'm going to go ahead and put... I here's where I want to put Sanji. I want to put Sanji right here, right below Luffy. I want to put him above Law and Kid. But I feel like everyone would get really mad at me. So instead, where I'm going to put him is here at 24. But in my heart, know that I have him at 22. I feel like Sanji probably is supposed to be weaker than Law and Kid. I just, I feel like he is. Um, I feel like he is. I feel like he's supposed to be weaker than Law and Kid. Like... When I obviously it's my list, but I think ultimately, Law and Kid. They're supposed to be above Sanji. <sighs> Put Sanji here. I do think Sanji is above Katakuri at this point. Um. I do think I might have Luchi too high. I do think I might have Luchi too high. <laughs> I'm just going to put Kong at 30. I don't know where the fuck to put him. Um, I'll put some asterisks next to him too. There we go. Now let's take a look back over the list. Let's see what we can fix, and then probably call it a stream. JMT ninety three, thanks for the ten. Boa younger younger sister showcased the same hockey that Luffy was trying to remember when mastering Rio. Looking back at chapter five ninety seven, really used the same hockey Luffy saw from Boa's sister. That is a great point. That is a fantastic point. 
because we can assume that Boa Hancock at least has that, right? That is a phenomenal point. So, do we move Boa Hancock up several spots? The only problem with me bo moving Boa Hancock up several spots is that when I'm looking at, um, like, we got Hancock versus Blackbeard and we got Law versus Blackbeard. And I know it's not just about matchups, but it's like, one was a protracted fight, the other was basically over pretty much right away. So I still just don't know, because if, if Hancock is a good hockey-based fighter, then why could she not fight once Blackbeard had grabbed her, you know? Because his fruit, I mean, his fruit, it negates devil fruit abilities, but not your physical fighting combat abilities. Like, it's not like Sea Stone. It's not like her actual physical strength is drained by that. It just negates the devil fruit abilities. So, going off of that logic, I think I still need to see it to believe it with Hancock in terms of her actual physical fighting abilities. I think I have to see it. Drew 101 says she defeated two of his men, though. Yeah, by turning them to stone. You know? I'm trying to evaluate it basically based on, like, how strong is she? Because we have to assume that characters can not, like, higher tier characters won't as easily get caught by that, right? Some because they're just not affected, some because they're smart, some because they're fast. We saw it with Blackbeard, right? Blackbeard, too quick, too savvy to get caught by that, right? So in that case, when she's caught by Blackbeard, how does she fight back with just her hockey fighting abilities? She didn't really do anything. That's the problem. Zane Blalock, thanks for the two. Boa was, was preoccupied by the Marines. Blackbeard snuck her. Let me reread the chapter. Is that right? We need to know if that's actually... Like, I'm not going to go with just random baseless stuff off of that. Is that what happened? I feel like that's chapter 1060... 1059? Let's take a look at the chapter again. Okay, so... Some shit happens. Um, nothing works, blah, blah, blah. That's Fista. Okay, perfume. Ah, uh, okay, there's a, there's an argument. There's definitely an argument that she got sneak attacked. There's definitely an argument. Um, yeah, I don't think she was ready for Blackbeard. I do wonder why she can't fight back here. Because she should be able to. Right? Mm, I'm going to rate her higher now. I'm going to put her higher. Magnus Olsen, thanks for the 20. You can't say see it to believe in Crockett 25. Um, it's just because Crocodile is... Uh, I mean, I I can put Katakuri higher than Crocodile if you want. I don't mind that. Um, it's just that Crocodile plays the role of a first commander at this point. He's also being given a lot of status in the story. So I'm kind of giving him some, some leeway there. I'm going to put Hancock higher. I think that Hancock... This is a big jump. This is a big jump. But I feel like Hancock's got an argument for being right up here. This is really hard, though. Hancock's just... She's somewhere in this range. Yeah, it's anti-Devil Fruit, but she should be able to fight back with physical force, right? But you could make the argument that he's got her by the neck, so she can't really do anything... It's weird she didn't even kick him. She was also getting choked. I'm trying to take film Stampede out of the qu equation because Stampede made, made her look really good. But we're saying that it's just a movie, right? So the movie makes up whatever it wants. Um, I don't fucking know with Hancock. It's too hard. Give her a... Okay. Let's do a quick poll. Sigrun says, combat-wise, King greater than Marco. See, there's, like, it's crazy to me that certain things can even happen in the manga. 
Like, you can literally have King fight Marco, and you can give King backup. Like, you can have him fight Queen, right? You can have King fight Marco in a 2v1 and get his ass handed to him for several chapters in a row. And there will still be people, there will still be people saying, well, King's a better fighter than Marco. Like, that's how difficult power scaling is. Because it's like, we're getting a consensus is because it's just like, the author can literally write stuff on the page and people can be like, nah, I still think it's just the other way around. It's crazy. Okay. I'm basically either going to bump Hancock up really high <laughs> or keep her right here. Because I think that if we give her the bet, like, because Blackbeard snuck up on her. Is, at least that's kind of what it looked like. It looked like she was focused on the Marines and then Blackbeard caught her. So if we assume that she would be like, if we assume that her Devil Fruit is more viable in combat, even against strong opponents, then she goes a lot higher up the list, basically, because, you know, I don't see why Sabo or Luchi or... I mean, maybe Luchi personality doesn't fit, but, like, I feel like a lot of these characters would be affected by um, by her fruit, right? So if we assume it's not easy to avoid her fruit, then... She shoots up the list quite a bit. I think it's just once you get to, like, a lot of the top-tier guys, they're all going to have some some degree of reason for why they wouldn't just lose easily to Hancock. Um, that's why it's tricky. So either I'm bumping her all the way above, like, King, or even Mark. Like, either I'm bumping her all the way up to here, or I keep her here. So that's the question. So, Boa Hancock. Either she's number, number 27, or she's... Um, Number 18. Those are the two options. Owen DY says, Oda says Mihawk greater than Shanks factually, and fans say no. If only Oda ever actually said that. He's the strongest swordsman, for sure. All right. We're bumping. Uh, damn. Okay, we'll give it three seconds. It's tight. We'll give it five seconds. This is really tight. I'm just going to go with the poll. I'm not even going to include my own opinion. I'm just going to go with the poll. Why would King not be affected? All right. Looks like we're going to put it around here. Hancock is it's so di she's one of the most difficult to rank because it's like I think that I mean I've we've been belaboring this point over and over but like um there's so many characters there's characters that are clearly stronger than her that she would probably have a good matchup against, right? But then there's characters that are we're saying are we that I'm saying are weaker than her that could beat her. Like Katakuri is gonna beat Hancock, no question, because he's not gonna get caught by her bullshit, and he's probably a better fighter overall with observation hockey, etc., than um than she is, right? Um I could imagine many characters... like I feel like Luchi, just based on how Mamanga did, and Luchi's kind of Mamanga's personality, but like amplified several tiers, just like He's a cold-hearted tr killer, trainer, etc. Like, I feel like there's several characters that Hancock's ability is just going to be not that useful against. But overall, we're seeing, like, how she does overall. Overall, I think she's got such a good shot at taking out so many characters. It's hard to say. So we're going to keep Hancock there. Um, Yeah, we're just going to keep Hancock there. All right. All right. Sanji slander is crazy. I, I'm i open to Sanji being higher. I, I've said this before. I think that if um, if Oda is about to have Sanji beat the Seraphim with specifically something that, is ha that has high damage output, right? If he has Sanji beat the Seraphim with something that has high damage output and we're about to see that, then Sanji probably goes right up to around here. Maybe just below Yamato or hand, like maybe right around here. Like I think he goes back to being very close to... I mean, even now, this isn't that many spots off from Zoro. Um, 
I think just based off what we've seen so far, until it's confirmed that he has something that can damage uh, high tank characters like, you know, like Marco and King and stuff like that, uh, we're just going to keep him there. But I, I can see the argument for Sanji being higher. I can see the argument for a lot of things. All right. Weevil, we're putting here because we don't give a fuck. Kong, we're putting here because we don't give a fuck. Akainu and Luffy, they could swap spots. I don't fucking know. Ah, uh, shit. Shit, I really want to put Luffy above... No, I really want... I want to put Akainu above Luffy, but it feels not justified, right? Because realistically, there should be no one in between the gap between Akainu and Aokiji. There should be no one, right? So this is just banking on the idea that Akainu got a power-up, right? Let's just clarify that. No, that feels wrong. <sighs> we're just gonna we're gonna keep this. We're gonna keep this. Canary Yellow says Shanks over Mihawk, you've let me down, man. We did a poll. Alright. For anything close, we rock with the poll. Poll said Shanks 60-40. I'm take it up with the sixty percent of people that voted Shanks. All right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I want to put Luffy a little bit higher. But I want to put Shanks higher. Want to put Luffy above below Aokiji cuz I I think that Luffy is clearly above any of the admirals at this point. So my take is basically a kind of is basically passed up what it means to be an admiral. Um okay. We're going to leave it at this point. We're going to leave it at this point. All right, so we got Emu, Dragon, Shanks, Mihawk, Akainu, Luffy, Aokiji, Blackbeard, Garp, Kizaru, Fujitora, Green Bull, Sengoku, Rayleigh, Ben Beckman, Zoro, Yamato, Hancock, Marco, King, Sabo, Luchi, Law, Kid, Sanji, Katakuri, Crocodile, Shiryu, Weevil, Kong. All right, good stuff, everybody. I enjoyed making this list. I have a Miss Super from Netcode Motel. Let me just catch up and make sure I'm not missing anything. But thank you very much, everybody, for coming through on this. Um... Luchi, Netcode Motel says, Luchi needed help to damage the Seraphim, Sanji tanked the Seraphim attack. Yeah, I could easily, like, you ask me in a couple chapters, maybe Sanji's, I've got Sanji much higher. Maybe I got Sanji much higher. Um, I just need to see it to believe it. See the confirmation, right? Because, I mean, by the same logic, you'd say, like, Luffy and Zoro needed help to damage the Seraphim, Sanji tanked the Seraphim attack. Does that put Sanji above Luffy and Zoro, right? Like, Luffy... Zoro, Luchi, and Kaku, they're all equally struggling against the Seraphim. So I'm not going to take Sanji doing one thing to put him above all of them. You know, even if it looked really cool blocking the, or tanking the Jinbei attack. Um, alright. Alright, guys. We're done. Um, we're done. We're done. Good stuff. Bennett says, who the fuck is Kong? <laughs> alright, guys. Um, I enjoyed this quite a bit. This was fun. Um, understand that not everything's set in stone. There's wiggle room for everything. You know, you don't know. Even Luffy and Akana, I'm still going back in my head. What feels right. But, that's it for this stream, and I will talk to you all later. Thank you for tuning in.